Okay, let's talk through all these golf events that you have coming up. Gabby, I'm glad you asked. Got my calendar right here. July 17th, I have Red Run. Then July 31st, I have the American Golf Outing uh, for the Cancer Society. I also have the American Cancer Society Golf Outing on the 31st. And also, I got yours on the 18th, buddy. Yeah, that's well, I'm going to be there. Boys, these what? are a lot of events and golf outings. Well, you want me to miss my own golf tournament? Gabby. They're all great cars. I mean, this okay. is hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this, guys. I got this. Don't worry about it. Hold on a second. He always. Guys, man, don't Randy Wise, Celebrity Golf Tournament. Watch for the eye. There you go. There it is. It's the Randy Wise Celebrity Golf Tour. Some of the biggest names in Michigan sports. And some, well, not so much. Brought to you in part by Premier Security Solutions, Fairway Packing Company, and Swiss Insurance. Watch episodes at WoodwardSports.com. <laughs> I believe again. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network live. WoodwardSports.com is always Adam Baydoon, Jeff, I Afraidy. No Gabby today. She's down in Allen Park uh, doing some amazing work. But I think there's only one way to start the show. Given the news that dropped last night. And that is to look at my good friend on the right of me and tell him, Jeff, good morning. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. It's a great morning. Monty Williams, the new head coach of the Detroit Pistons. Thank you, Tom Gores, for all you do. Thank you for your service, for getting this done. And we talked about Monty. We've been talking about Monty the last couple days, uh, really the last week. I didn't think this could get done. And a lot of it had to do with Monty's interest. I figured, hey, Monty Williams still being paid, still owed about $20 million from the Phoenix Suns. But guess what? When Tom Gores wants someone, he gets them. And it's been proven, and I can't wait to get into it. Uh, I got a lot of things here written down. I, I prepped my ass off last night just to try and convince all of you and give some reassurance to why Monty is the right guy. So I I'm excited. It's a great day. Six-year deal, $78.5 million. My goodness, Tom Gores, finally. Imagine. I mean, look, we just have to talk about why there's excitement, okay? Pistons were the favorites to land Kevin Ollie as of two days ago. He was the favorite. The betting favorite. I would have killed myself. But no, now I'm here. <laughs> I get to still do a show. I get to see my son born. This is great. This is more than basketball. This is hope for life. Four years in a row watching Dwayne Casey coach this team and it get nowhere. 18 wins a season. Fucking garbage. Hope. That, to me, is the biggest thing. Do, are they instantly a better team? Absolutely. Do they really need to overhaul the roster? Absolutely. Do they need to trade a few people that are already on the roster currently? Fuck yeah, they do. And I think this sends a message, not just to Pistons fans of, hey, we're serious about winning. To me, it's more than that. It's a message to Troy Weaver. Bro, we're not going to fucking Sam Press to you and let you just draft a player and another one and another four and another eight and another ten. And, oh, you finally ended up with SGA. Oh, and now you ended up with some really young cores. And now it's finally here ten years later. We're not fucking doing a ten-year rebuild, bro. So you don't get to just keep drafting and trading for potential like the James Wiseman trade. You can't just keep holding on to maybes like Killian Hayes. Go build a goddamn roster that you can fit and build around Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. That to me is the most important thing. You know what you're getting out of Monty Williams. You're getting a guy that has an identity on offense, a coach that'll hold his players accountable on defense. Uh, you can cite the DeAndre Ayton issue. If you want to start there with Monty Williams and Phoenix. He got Phoenix to a finals. I think this guy is a good coach. Uh, is he the best coach in the NBA? No. But he's one Is of. he one of the seven, eight best coaches in the NBA currently? 
yeah, I think you can make that case. So now it's on Troy Weaver. Now the pressure's on him. How do you build a contending roster in the next few years around what we think is a potential star backcourt with Kate and Ivy. And we could all agree, too. Monty uh, didn't uh, go out the way I think we all expect him to go out in Phoenix. I don't think he should have been fired. Uh, but thanks, Matt Ishbia, for your kind service as, as someone who's from Michigan. So I appreciate that. And, and with Tom Gore's hiring Monty Williams, it does show that they want to win. And they're serious about winning whatever price tag that comes with Tom Gore's wants to win. So that's much appreciated. We know, you know, at least over the last couple months, it's been it's – a been dark days for Pistons fans and now waiting for this news for the new head coach of the Pistons to be announced and guess what Monty Williams one of the best coaches in the NBA period he has the most wins since 2021 so by default at least in the regular season having playoff success as well I know some of those series didn't end necessarily how we all expected them to end but for the most part a finals appearance he was up 2-1 in the finals uh, before losing but regardless Monty's a guy who works well with young players, works well with guards to see what he did with Devin Booker over the last couple of years. One of my favorite players in the NBA to watch. You got to see his growth and him thrive. And it's not just him, Cam Johnson, Michael Bridges, what Monty has done for a ton of young players. And later in the show, I'm going to get into the offensive philosophy of Monty and how that could you know, help the Pistons greatly. And, and thanks to um, one of my good friends, Jack Kelly, on Twitter for, for breaking that all down. But overall, this is a message being sent from ownership Tom Gores, we're sick of losing. And Monty's the first step. The other step is free agency. Troy, he's going to handle the rest of it. The draft, free agency, bringing in talent, that's his job. But hiring a coach, I don't give a damn what the price tag was. The, the coach does not count against the cap. So anybody saying, that's a lot of money for Monty Williams, you had to pay for him. And you had to give him a, a longer term deal to at least show him we'll be patient with you. A six year deal could be up to you know seven years, eight years, just to get the specifics of it. Um, it could be up to eight years and a hundred million dollars with incentives and team options. You had to give him a lengthy deal. You have to at least pitch to Monty, hey, we're going to be patient. This we're, we're in this for the long haul. And knowing who Monty is and what he's done in this league, I think it's a perfect fit for the two guards that we have currently with the Pistons, Cade and Jaden Ivey. What a great mentor for those two. And we talk about you know helping these guys play together. It'll be their first season next year, first full season, hopefully, playing together. Who better tend to start that off than Monty Williams? He's going to help speed this process up a little bit. You look at Monty Williams. He got fired, right? He's being paid to sit home. Why would he take a job in Detroit? All right, well, they made him an initial offer. He said, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. And then they gave him a record offer. The most money ever given to a head coach in NBA history. Uh, yeah, I'll listen. And you can not like it. You can say, oh, it's, it shouldn't be about the money. Monty should want to come. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know how it works. All right, that's how it works. I got a team without Kevin Durant to the NBA Finals in the last three years. Winning 50 plus games a year. I didn't ask ownership to throw away my entire roster for a guy who, in recent years, has been in liability with injuries in Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's an amazing player, but like you said, Monty Williams works so well with young players. It's a young roster. Some of you may think this is hope for Killian Hayes. Don't even want to acknowledge <laughs> that. Well, don't even want to acknowledge that. I want Killian Hayes. You know, remember the movie Madagascar growing up? Yeah. You know those boxes that they would trap the animals in? <laughs> yeah. I want Killian Hayes trapped in one of those boxes, and I want him sent to fucking Shanghai. All right? Well, a lot of these players, too, like Killian Hayes, uh, we're going to find out a lot, and in, in especially for a team that I think will win 30-plus games. The leash is a lot shorter now with a lot of these players. Once you bring in Monty Williams, things change a little bit. Now, I'm not saying they're going to make the play and make the playoffs this year. I'm not saying that. I think they'll be better. But Monty's job is to get these guys on track quicker than we would have thought. We still thought they were years away, depending on who they hired. If they hired Kevin Ali, there was a lot of uncertainty. But this tells me that Tom Gores is like, hey, I don't want any unproven commodities. And that's okay. I mean, a lot of teams go that route. Uh, the Bucks just went that route with Adrian, uh, Adrian Griffin. But the Pistons don't want to do that. Uh, they they want someone that's experienced, that has a resume in this league, that other teams were, were you know going after. And Monty Williams, I love it. You get arguably, not, I would say, the best coach available on the market. Yes, you have to overpay for him, but this doesn't count against your cap. You will be okay. 
regardless, Monty Williams, even in free agency, will help attract players. Like for, for someone like Monty with the amount of relationship he, relationships he has in the NBA, coaching Team USA, coaching all the superstars he's coached, uh, having a relationship with Troy Weaver back to OKC, he's had an experience in this league with a lot of different high-level players. In free agency, a part of it when you're a free agent and you're looking at a team to go to, part of it is, who am I playing for? And now you have Monty Williams at the helm, one of the well, best you know coaches what? in the league. That's intriguing. We'll get to timeline in 15 minutes, okay? But I need to know, is Devin Poker a possibility? I think that's what most Pistons fans want to know. He can opt out in a year, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, I'd have Pretty to double sure. check that. Pretty sure he can opt out in a year. Devin Booker to Detroit, I think, is the saving grace for this franchise. But let's say it doesn't happen. What does the timeline look like now with Monty Williams? And I think a lot of it depends on Troy Weaver. You have to look at Isaiah Stewart. You have to look at Corey Joseph, for God's sake, please. Mm -hmm. You have to look at these guys and say, what are they? And what are the Pistons, honestly? Not to shit on anybody this morning, but like, what are the Pistons? They're a young team full of players that on really good teams are probably sitting 7th, 8th, maybe even ninth on the bench in the rotation. That's just the reality. Right. So it's it's a team of guys that aren't even starters in the NBA, let alone the sixth man. They're just role players that you need to have, depth players, but that's not how you win games. I need K to turn into an all-star. I need Ivy to turn into an all-star. Of course, that's the best case scenario. Right. But I can't just rely on that. I need to bring in good basketball players. How do I do that? Is it in free agency? Do I package Bogdanovich and that fifth overall pick? and I I go chase somebody, I'm really all ears to what Troy Weaver, and again, don't be bullish. It's not just a six-year, $78 million offer that brought Monty Williams here. There was a plan that I'm sure was agreed upon between the core front office ownership and Monty, and the conversation went something along like this, I believe. Here's a huge contract offer, Monty. Here's what we're going to do. Whether it's trading the pick drafting X player, uh, packaging the pick with Bogdanovich, let's say, and somebody else, and we're going to move for a player like this. I think you're going to see a lot of activity from the Pistons over the next two to three months. Yeah. no, A lot of activity. I would agree with that. This roster, I think, is going to be changed completely, I think, sooner than later. And if I'm Monty Williams, I'm really happy with my backcourt. But I know I need defenders. I need shooters. I got size and Duran, but I'm never going to play Wiseman and Duran at the same time. I'm not Dwayne Casey. I'm not a fucking idiot, right? Oh. So I'm not going to do that. And maybe if I do, it's for five, four, five, six minutes, maybe, depending on the situation, depending on the team. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. I think there's hope this morning. Oh, wow. I'm very happy. Wow, that is for you to say I that. I was ready to jump off the Ambassador Bridge yesterday. Yeah, well... Here we are now. Dude, Monty Williams I, is your head coach. I told you, Twitter has been the devil to me. All of, Every time I go on my feed, whether either it's about transgenders, all right, some dude getting shot and killed, teenagers fighting, or Kevin Ali preaching to the choir. Okay. It's always one of the four things, <laughs> and I'm sick of it. So fix it, Elon. You, Thank you, Tom <laughs> Gores. I fucking love you, man. That's the shit I'm talking about. Take your franchise seriously. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about Tom Gores? I mean, let's be honest here. He bought the team relatively cheap to what it's valued at now. Right. You get Monty Williams in a winning situation. I mean, this, this is literally peanuts to Tom Gores compared to the value that it's going to bring over the next four or five years in terms of the team's overall value as a franchise. Right. So if Monty can bring your, great your franchise into being relevant, yeah, the, the being the highest paid coach in the NBA, you're not going to think about it. This reminds me a lot when Tom Gores got Stan Van Gundy, because remember, the Golden State Warriors were trying to get Stan Van Gundy before they hired Steve Kerr, which crazy to think about that, by the way. Uh, but before he you know, took that Golden State job, what swayed him to the Pistons was Tom Gore said, you know what, we'll give you uh, the opportunity to, to be the general manager. Like Tom has always shown when he wants somebody, he'll go he'll get him. And, and this is another, I think this is a great hire. So all credit to Tom and the Pistons for getting this one done. We, we both like Troy Weaver, right? Yes. No issues with Troy. Want to see more killer instincts in terms of building a, 
a legitimate roster, especially now that you have a Monty Williams, but you, you got a good group here. And I don't want to hear anything about John fucking Beeline or Dwayne Casey again. All right? Why? They're in stupid front office roles that nobody gives a fuck about. Okay? I don't give a shit. That shit drives well, clearly me Clearly you do, because you're talking about it now. Because so. I'm frustrated with people's comments. It drives me nuts. I see everything on Twitter. What I see everything what in the chat. Don't worry about it. I see everything. You fucking idiots. His assignment was to tank. Shut the fuck up. Go fucking cry to your mom and suck on her I mean, tit. We'll take a break when we get back. What does the timeline look like for Dwayne Casey and the Detroit Pistons? Is Devin Booker even a possibility? We'll get to all of that next. But before we go, I got to tell you about my good friends over at Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Open 10 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. No appointment necessary. They're amazing styles. So take care of you like they take care of me as always. So get to a local Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zaniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health organization. We serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458-4601. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show. Jeff is chugging a Red Bull like a jackass he is, and we're back live. WoodwardSports.com as always. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. All right, Jeff. Before Monty Williams was ever hired, I told you five years. Five years, I can see this team contending with God knows who is going to be their coach at the time. Okay. Yeah. Now that Monty Williams is here, let me break you. Let me break it down in terms of not wins, but expectations. Okay. Okay. I think year one, you're looking for 26 to 29, 32 wins. This year, at most, yeah, year one, unless something changes in the off season, they overhaul the roster, which is yet to be done. Okay. Uh, 26 to me is is going to be a, a good number to give them. Uh, it just is. Okay. That's Kate your, has to prove. That's, yeah. Kate has to prove he can play a full season. Ivy and Kate have to prove that they can play together, which I think they will. That shouldn't be an issue. But there are things you want to see year one, right? There's a evolution in year one that needs to just happen, and I think people need to accept it. Year two. I think you talk playing. I think you're looking at a play-in or even a seven seat in the Eastern Conference. It's going to be difficult. It's going to require shrewd moves from Troy Weaver. But I think you have a coach that's capable of getting you into the play-in at least in year two. Now, what happens by year three? Well, that's Kate Cunningham's fifth year in the NBA. And that would be Jaden Ivey's fourth year in the NBA. Going into their fifth and then six years respectively, right? So what's going to happen with that? I would imagine, I would hope, Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham have developed into all-star caliber players. And if that is the case, then this is a 50-win team by the third year. They surround them with wing, uh, wing players, defenders, shooters. Jalen Duren continues his development, which God knows his ceiling. He's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But you give me an all-star backcourt. That's a 50-win team in the Eastern Conference in the third year with Monty Williams. Contention? Look. I'm not going to sit here and say conference contenders by the third year. Right. I think they'll win a lot of games. But you look at Memphis, they're, they weren't ready to contend. They're young. The Pistons are going to be young in three years still. Are they built like Boston in three years where they can balance age in terms of experience and then the youth. Good role players. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know that yet. And I think it's really dishonest of me if I sit there and just project it like it's going to happen. But I think by the third year you can win 50 games. Mm -hmm. I do. And that's based on, yes, Cade and Ivy developing and Troy Weaver overhauling this roster because I think you have the coach. You have no excuses. 
you're going to have an identity built. Your first year is going to be, let's see what I have with Kate and Ivy together in the backcourt. Let's see how Duran develops. Let's see what some of these role players can do for me. Can I trade some of these guys by the deadline? Can I flip into something? Whatever it may be. But you know, night in and night out, what you're going to get out of a Monty Williams coach team. That is so important to me. Mm -hmm. Something I didn't get for the last four years under Dwayne Casey. Whether you like him or not, there was no identity. It was just losing and not playing any defense. Let alone the ball movement was horrendous, by the way, which I'll let you take over with, Monty, because they move the basketball, and it is so nice to watch. So you have that. Jeff, I think by the third year, 50 wins, I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to contend for a championship because I think that's dependent on their star players becoming stars. And typically it takes the sixth, even seventh, eighth year for guys to mature enough to really really carry the weight of a finals expectation yeah yeah and a lot of it obviously depends on Cade and Jay Ivey we agree there those guys hitting all-star ceilings or superstar ceilings them getting to their potential is everything for contention for the playoffs I mean that's how the NBA works it's a star driven league now getting the right head coach can speed up that process especially with with Monty Williams you look at uh, the first year he got to Phoenix they were a 19 win team not a lot changed the following year. They went from 19 wins to 34 wins. They got better offensively, defensively. Their pace was better. Um, or the, the defense got a, a little worse, but still, still, overall, they were a better team offensively. And that's the biggest thing right now with the Pistons. Yes, defensively, they're bad. But a, a lot of that is also personnel. But part of it, offensively, they're really bad. And uh, JB, or uh, Lucas, if you could, could you throw up, uh, I, I sent two screenshots of two tweets and I want to throw those up if you could. Uh, it's from Jack Kelly, um, just kind of explaining Monty's offensive philosophy. So here we go. Jack says, uh, this is the first, first tweet. Aside from mentorship and player development, this is what has me most excited about the Monty hire. Jack says, um, Williams ran what he called a .5 offense, which also, I just want to say this, Monty referred to that offense as the, he says, quote, I think it's the future, or I think it's where the league's heading. So um, it's it's what they ran it with Phoenix. It's a .5 offense, referring to .5 seconds. He wants a player to spend with the ball before they make a decision to drive, pass, or shoot. It's basically to speed up pace, and no one's holding the basketball. Could you throw up the second tweet? Now, this is the Pistons numbers. Um, in, in the area he wants to improve. Look at this. Last season, Detroit was 28th in passes per game, 27th in assists per game, 28th in touches per game, 4th in average seconds per touch, 1st in dribbles per touch, 28th for offensive rating. Uh, Jack says overall, ton of ball stopping, hold, and evaluate slow offense. And then he says at the bottom, by the way, this isn't all on Casey. I think it's also a result of having young, inexperienced decision makers. Why are we so, makers such apologists in this It's town. not apologists. It's facts. It's like, not you, facts. No, it's, it's... Dwayne Casey's the coach of that team. You, he dictates what I, happens. I understand that. But you, you're at the point of the tweet, and if you watch the games, you have a, a lot of young, inexperienced players. You can't... Dwayne can't... It's like, he, Who's the biggest ball stopper on this team? He can't be a puppeteer on, on the court. Who's the biggest ball stopper on this team? It's not the young players. Okay, it's regardless, I don't want to get into Dwayne Casey. This is about Monty Williams. So I, I want to talk about this for a second. So you see the stats in which they ranked last year. You, you tell me right now why Monty won't improve every single area of this team offensively. That's the biggest thing to take away. And Adam, you asked for an offensive identity. This is an offensive identity. It's what made the Suns what they were. They got Chris Paul... Again, 51 wins, 64 wins, and then last year they had a little bit of a down year. So overall, Monty Williams offensively coaching young players, what the impact he'll have on this team, you'll see it right away. I, I think what your expectations, 20 to 29 wins, okay. I think 30, 30 plus is fair. Um, they should be. They won 17 last year. If you, you tell me you have a healthy K, they improve the roster, everybody takes a little bit of a step forward, they can at least get to 30 wins with Monty. I do. And, and it's really for the future. That's why they gave him a long-term deal. So, uh, again, it's exciting. Monty Williams, I think he's going to have a huge impact on what this team does offensively, and you're going to see it right away. The what have the Pistons lacked over the last four years? Offensive and defensive identity. That's been the biggest issue. There's no rhyme or reason to how they play on the offensive side of the ball, let alone the defensive side, which I think you and me both agree. Mm -hmm. It's just effort. Right. Defense at the end of the day is all about effort. You can you can coach it up to an extent. I mean, there's obviously the teams like Miami that just do it at an exceptional level. They're so well coached. But for the most part, rebounds, defense, it's effort. Mm -hmm. Offensively, this team has been stopping the ball for years, whether it was Jeremy Grant and now Boyan Bogdanovich. 
it was the same shit. Dribble, 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 dribble. I'm taking the ball. A ton of isos. I, look, I get it, Jeff. But I, I think we give Dwayne Casey way too much. Just, you know, it's okay. And now it's easy to do that because Monty Williams is here. And I'm very happy with that, obviously. But this Pistons team does not know how to play basketball together. And I appreciate you saying, okay, 30 to 33 wins. That's great. But the reason I went down as low as 26 was I haven't seen Kate, Ivy, uh, Kate and Ivy play together. I don't know how that translates. We'll see. Can Kate stay healthy? A lot of questions. Right. Not bad things, just questions. I'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. So year one is a I'd like to see it year. And then I think year two, you can take off and get into the playoffs. Yeah. And then by year three, I think 50 wins. Fair? Yeah, fair. That's, Would you agree with the 50? Absolutely. Especially in a three-year span. They did that in Phoenix. Now it depends on what Troy can bring in. But to your point, yeah, three well, that, years. Now he, the pressure's on him. Right. Now it's not just, oh, I like this player. He's got a lot of potential. Maybe I can flip him in a year. No, you need proven now commodities. You need to go get role players that can actually score buckets, play defense, and mm -hmm. fit. How are you going to space the floor now? You're going to have Dern in the paint. You're going to have Caden Ivey running your backcourt. Okay, well, where's the spacing going to come from? Bogdanovich, is, is he going to really sit on the wing if Monty Williams tells him to? And says, hey, just sit in the corner. Wait for your shot. And who's the third guy? Who's going to be the third guard slash forward that's going to be on the court for you when you run a small lineup and they're going to give you spacing? Mm -hmm. That is going to be the biggest question, whether it's a rookie you take at fifth overall. I doubt it. Whether they package Bogdanovich in the fifth pick, who knows? But that's those are the questions I want to see answered over the next few weeks, even months. That's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. I want to see what they're going to do with this roster that's going to make me believe even more. But... The huge takeaway is Monty Williams makes his team a success in three years. Yeah, he makes them... It would ha take a disaster for them not to have success. It would take Cade not panning out, Ivy regressing, injuries catching up to the team, on top of Troy Weaver not bringing a single good player right. for the next three years, for this team not to do what I think we just agreed on. Yeah. It's very simple. Give Monty talent. And you, we expect this team to immediately get better. So, again, it's, it's all credit to Tom Gores, credit to the Pistons for getting this one done. And also, as much as it is about the money, of course, like if you're the highest paid coach in NBA history, you get that long-term deal. It's worth it for Monty. Um, you get a ton of security and a ton of guaranteed money. A lot of it, too, is, you know, looking at what the Pistons have currently. Like, there's that's part of it, right? What Monty's walking into, as, as much as Monty looks at the money and says great you know i get to make almost a hundred million dollars coaching a game at the same time look at Cade, look at ivy look at duran and you have the fifth overall pick this year a lot of flexibility in detroit a lot of you know intriguing players so i don't want to just get rid of that and say it's all because of the money i think monty looks at detroit looks at troy the, fami uh, the familiarity with troy and thinks you know what I can do this. The money is... I just I need a long-term deal, which I agree with. If you're going I, to Detroit, you need a long-term deal. Not saying Monty would have gotten $12 million a year anywhere else. Probably would have been closer to nine, nine and a half million, probably by the market. Yeah. But Monty could have sat home, made a ton of money from Phoenix, and taken a contending job next season. Absolutely. I think, again, I think they all agreed verbally whenever they sat down together and they said, Monty, here's the plan. Here are the players we're going to pursue. Here's what we're going to do with our draft capital. Here's what we're going to do with all of our young players. This is what we think of Cade and Ivy in the backcourt. What do you think of them? I think they had an honest conversation about this team, and they said, how do we turn it into a contender in three years? Mm -hmm. How do we turn this into a 45-plus win team in three years? By the third year, can we win 50 games? I think it's doable. You have yeah. the right coach in place now. We'll take a break. When we get back, I want to continue on with Monty Williams. We'll open up the phone lines. 313-552-6322 is the number. We'll continue with Monty Williams and what this team is going to look like. Devin Booker, I don't think is the conversation I have today. I just think it's so out there. Yeah, he, it, I don't... It's I, just... Even if he does... One, opting out would cost him a ton of money, right? Because only Phoenix can give him the super. Mm-hmm. And then you look at a sign and trade deal. How are you going to make that money work? Yeah. It's, it's, and then how do you justify? How does Phoenix feel like they're winning in that? Uh, it's just, I don't know. 
too too much. Yeah, of you're, a, you're trading away one of the on. best guards in the league. It's, yeah, yeah. it's not as easy as easily a top four guard in the league. Yeah, easily. And people think it's two K. You just send a trade over and get Devin Booker. Yep. It's four uh, <laughs> no, trade over yeah, right it's on. It's not. It's not that easy. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Tell us about our good friends over at the Sports Marketing Agency. The Sports Marketing Agency helps spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, this is the S Word, helps fight the stigma about seeking help. If you or someone you know is struggling, head to thesportsma.com for more information. It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Sense around world, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's, and if you want to know how, go to at centronworld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? <sighs> Great taste, guaranteed. The only sports network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Sports. Detroit's winning sports network. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show live. WoodwardSports.com as always. Adam Badoon, Jeff, I Afraidy. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. Dwayne, Casey, moved into the front office just over a month, month and a half ago. And you now have Monty Williams taking charge of the Detroit. How happy are you? you very look, happy. You look very good. I mean, it's always a good thing. I mean, we we spent all this time, at least the last couple months, talking about the Pistons, the uncertainty of the future, yep. and then you land the best coach available in the market. It's a good thing. No matter what they paid for him, it's a good thing. They were going to have to pay no matter what. Have to. Because yeah. you're essentially telling a, a coach who will get hired by a much more ready to contend team in a year. He's if got he all, just the took off. all the leverage. All the leverage. You had to convince him of the project, and the money had to be a part of it. Just get over it. The money is irrelevant. It's irrelevant to this cap. It's irrelevant to everything in life. Tom Gord is paying for the fucking coach. Who cares? Play and team. if things go right, Play and they win 50 man, games in three not. years, add a few hundred million to this team's value mm -hmm. in terms of its total valuation as a company. That's peanuts. Peanuts for what you're paying for Monty Williams. So I don't have an issue with the money, but Jeff... Uh, we're going to open up the phone call, uh, excuse me, the phone lines. Call in everybody, 313-552-6322. Me and Jeff would love to hear what your thoughts are on the Monty Williams hire. But, Jeff, you talked about the offense. You talked about ball movement. Cade, really good in the pick and roll. Jaden Ivey, pretty good, especially in the second half of the season in the pick and roll. His mid-range got so much better. Tell me how this benefits your young backcourt. So you look at the the offensive philosophy. I kind of ran through uh, last segment, the .5 offense. That's going to benefit Jaden Ivey and Cade because two things. Number one, with Ivey, he likes to play fast regardless. And you look at his playmaking ability, his ability to tack the basket. He's going to thrive in this offense. And same with Cade, his decision-making, his shot creation, you know, his ability to get others involved. Like the offensive philosophy that Monty's bringing with him is a perfect fit. And I'm sure that was part of the conversation too. Yes, of course, I, I'm not naive. I understand the money as well, but personnel matters. And you talk about what DeAndre Ayton was able to turn into. And although Ayton and Monty didn't have the greatest relationship, I think we'd all agree that it, that wasn't on Monty. For the most part, every player that's played for Monty has nothing but good things to say about him besides DeAndre Ayton. So, if that tells you anything, Monty's a, a <clears throat> regarded as you know one of the best coaches, one of the best mentors in the NBA. So it's a great thing for your young backcourt. That was one of my worries. Uh, it's not just you know them turning into superstars, them turning into all stars. That's the goal. But can they play together? You're watching a situation in Boston right now with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and although they've made a ton of Eastern Conference Finals, they made the finals. That's still a question. Can those two guys coexist? That's the question we have for Cade and Ivy, and you're going to find that out this year, but who else better to have in that role as head coach than Monty Williams? I think his offensive philosophy is a, is a perfect fit. Um, he's going to be great in free agency. Uh, uh, like I mentioned before, Cam Johnson, somebody that we talked about briefly, and I'm sure we'll have a conversation with, with Brandon when he comes in here at 930, our beat writer for Woolworth Sports for the Detroit Pistons. He'll break some of that down as well. Uh, but it's going to be a busy summer for the Pistons. I don't know how much having Monty changes their plan, as in, you know, you get Kevin Ali, maybe you're a little more patient with Monty. Um, you want to get this thing going. You want to get him talent. Because one thing Monty always talked about in Phoenix was him and, and James Jones being kind of right at the hip 
and evaluating talent, finding smart basketball players, like finding the right fit. Kind of like with Brad and Dan, how they always preach fit and the type of player they're looking for. That's always been Monty in Phoenix. So in Detroit, I'm sure him and Troy have a certain type of player they're going to go after, whether it's in the draft or free agency. So um, I think Monty overall for this backcourt, it is perfect. And for a guy, it, it, see, it's different with Kevin Ali or, or Charles Lee, because listen, I like Charles Lee a lot. It's different when you bring in a guy with cachet, somebody that's you know one coach of the year, somebody that's been to the finals, because that's the difference. Dwayne Casey won coach of the year, but he didn't make an NBA finals as a head coach. Monty did that only a couple seasons ago, and he had a lead in the finals as well. So he brings finals experience, playoff experience, um, coaching superstars at all different levels. Like I said, Coach Team USA was one of the assistants on that staff. Got to work with LeBron, KD, um, all those types of players. So he's a perfect fit. Who else better to have in the building? Cade, Ivy, they have any questions, you can go to Monty Williams for advice. So again, all credit to the Pistons for getting this one done. And I think his his impact, you'll see it right away. You have Not an saying issue with this the team will be 40 wins right away, but you'll see it right away. Oh. Do I have an issue with the money? Is that, is that your yeah. question? No, not at all. I mean, people have to under... It doesn't count against the salary cap. So when you he, when you see, like, Greg Popovich, the highest paid coach of the NBA, and then Monty jumps him, this isn't, like... The, it, it, this isn't giving a super max to a player where it's going to count against your cap. It doesn't. You could, give, you could give Monty a blank check. I don't care. That's Tom Gores' problem. As long as he's okay with paying it, which he is, you're good. Like, the, the, the amount of money you paid for the coach doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It doesn't Especially matter. Especially for this situation, just, you needed to overpay for I think it. most fans have never been in a position of power in their fucking lives also. You've never been at the negotiating table and had all the leverage. I think that's your problem. You're only seeing it from one side, which is, oh my God, he declined the first offer and then we had to overpay to get... No, 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 no. It's not how it works. You want me to come work for your company, which is in a growing you know, state, but it's not... One of the top tier companies. You want me to come work there? It's a startup. You're going to have to pay up. Taking a lot of risk here. My name's on the line. If I don't get it to work in Detroit, damn it, my next job's probably going to be in Charlotte. Not going to be that much better. <laughs> so that's just the reality. Or I'm going to end up like Dwayne Casey in a front office doing nothing. That's Seriously, that's the reality, man. So yeah, you want to hire me to be your head coach? Yeah, money talks. Of course it does. When, it, does it, it ever not? And for this this uh, comment in the in the chat too, Herb Nash says uh, at WilbertSports.com doesn't go against the cap, but ownership may be hesitant to fork over more for players. No, that's not going to happen. It's not. I, I promise you. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Tom you have Gores, to spend a certain amount of money. Yeah. Uh, on the cap every single year, anyways. There's a minimum threshold. And Tom Tom wants a winner. He's not going to spend all this money on a coach and say, you know what? I'm not going to spend any money on players like that. That that's not how it works. But JB. I need your thoughts, man. Monty Williams, what do you think? Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy for it. I'm happy that Gore and Weaver aren't just going to mail the season in this the upcoming year. They actually went out there and found someone that they see and they value that can take this team to the next level. Mm -hmm. Adam, I agree with you. Year one, you come in, you evaluate the players that you have, see what aspects you can improve in them in that first year, find your weaknesses as well, too. And then that second year, that's when you start to put all these pieces together and start building these these players up as much as you can. Devin Booker, I think, will come along the lines, but probably not in the first year or two. But honestly, you have an issue with the nice money, court. JB? Oh, no. I don't have an issue with the money. I mean, yesterday I did. I was questioning it a little bit just on um, Monty Williams' side. Like, is he just coming back for a paycheck? Or does he actually truly love coaching? and want to be here but i do think he does want to be here i know money talks but still yeah that it, it, it isn't the end part of the game all. it's part it, of the it's game it's definitely part of the game and money i'm not listen we're not naive money's a big part of it but you can't convince me that monty would sign an eight-year uh sign his life away for eight, eight year years yep, potential yep. eight-year deal we'll just say it there six year if you want to say it um you sign six years away for um a franchise or a situation he has he doesn't want anything to do with I don't think he would sign up for six years and be like, ah, I don't want to do this, but the money's great. No, the part of it is, you know what? Because again, that's his coaching record. It's on the line. Like if he's here for the next four years and they can't win, that affects Monty as well. So Monty's smart enough to know that. Uh, uh, money's majority of it, but to your point, JB, I'm not saying the Pistons is this marquee destination, but clearly he sees something. He sees something he can build off of. Something Guys, with talent. 
Tom Gore's bought the team for three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. They're now worth one point nine billion. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Bought them for three hundred twenty-five million. Currently valued at one point nine billion. In two thousand and twelve, the Warriors were worth four hundred and fifty million dollars. Today, seven point six billion dollars. You get to a finals. That 1.9 billion will turn into 2.3, 2.4. So on the 70, 80, potential 100 million that you're going to spend on Monty Williams, you put together a team that wins 50 games for three consecutive years, let's say in the next four or five years. You put that team together, you're going to be worth damn near 2.5 to even $3 billion, given just how the NBA continues to grow. I mean, look at the Suns, man. It should be a, what he paid for the Suns versus what they were years ago. And now giving Kevin Durant. Like, the Suns' the Suns overall net worth as a franchise and what they're worth has gone up tremendously. So you're right about that. Uh, the Money, to me, is like such a non-factor. It doesn't matter at all. You got the one of the best coaches available. Absolutely. I know Budenholzer was on the market. But you got a guy who I think fits here really well. Monty Williams is going to come and take no shit. You're going to play a certain style of basketball, which is much more pleasing mm -hmm. on everybody's eyes than what the fuck we've had to watch the last four years. You're going to play better defense, and you're going to enter this period where you're going to see your, your babies essentially grow up. Kate, Ivy, Duran, they're going to grow up in the next few years. And hopefully that leads you into a place where you're contending in the NBA. That's all you can ask for. So I'm happy. I'm very happy this morning. We'll take a break when we get back. Whew. Let's take a break from. Uh, should we? Should, I think we should go to the calls. Actually, yeah. we should. We should go to the people. Right? Is that fair, JB? All yeah, right, fuck fair. it. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll save the top ten corners in the NFL list for nine o'clock. We'll take callers next. So when we get back, we'll answer everybody on the phone lines. Thank you for being patient. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends over at Guardian Alarm. Well, we talk about the Pistons improving defensively and the impact of Monty Williams. Let me tell you about Guardian Alarm. They're always solid defensively. You got customized solutions from real experts, 24-7 professional monitoring and technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves not only technology that's been proven to work, but by people that have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT for more information. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. in Detroit sports coverage. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show, woodwardsports.com. As always, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. All right, Jeff, it's been a good morning so far, 43, 44 minutes in. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of Monty Williams, I think rightfully so. I want to switch it up a little bit because I'm really not interested in these calls because half of them are Killian Hayes. And the other half are Dwayne Casey and complaining about the money. So we're not going to do that this morning, okay? PFF put out a list, top 10 corners in the NFL. And I want to ask you, did they get it right? Sauce at one, Jalen Ramsey at two, Darius Slay at three, Patrick Sertan Jr. at four. JC Horn, my boy, all the way down at nine. Did they get it right, Jeff? Uh, I think for the most part, I, I know when you look at this list initially, you see Sauce number one and Jalen Ramsey number two. But let's be honest here. What Sauce did last year as a rookie, unfathomable. And, and I think that deserves a ton of respect. And we have to remember, this is PFF. So PFF, they, they measure things a little differently. Sauce, I think, overall, PFF grades, he nailed all of those. Um, and Jalen Ramsey, we know how solid he's been for really the majority of his career, always a top corner. So I don't think this is a slight at Jalen Ramsey. 
I just think it's acknowledging how good Sauce is and will be um, for his future. He's only going to get better. Game's only going to continue to slow down. So the fact that he played this way in his rookie year, that says everything. Um, then you got Slay, Darius Slay at three, Sertan at four, Jair Alexander at five, Gilmore at six, which I thought was interesting. Gilmore at six. Uh, I feel like he slowed down a little bit, but still, he's still a top 10 quarter. Marshawn Lattimore, Trayvon Diggs, uh, J.C. Horn, and, and Jamel Dean, who a lot of Lions fans wanted in Detroit. I don't mind this list, that really. I, I think Gilmore, maybe... Isn't Slay too high, though? He, no, I don't think so. I think Gilmore's too high, He's to be not better than Patrick Sertan. And Jalen Ramsey's not better than Patrick Sertan. Like, if you, they would have just done the list, you, you, one, if they would have just done it with one, stayed the same, Two was Patrick Sertan. Three was Slay or Ramsey, your choice. And four was Slay or I don't care. Mm -hmm. I would have been okay with the list. The only issue I have is who two and three are. I think Sertan's the second best corner in the NFL. Really? Yeah. I think one through four. I mean, Sauce you did can... something that was unprecedented. He was all pro and arguably the best corner in football as a rookie on a losing football team. Mm hmm. That is not normal. The fact that Trayvon Diggs is even on this list is a fucking disgrace. Gives up a thousand yards a year. Nobody says anything. Oh, no problem. Trayvon Diggs. Stephon Diggs' brother, baby. Or cousin, whatever the hell he is. I don't get it. I don't get the the confusion with Darius Slay. You don't think he's... I, no, you no, 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 no. I just said I'd put him at four. One, it's not. That's it. But Jalen Ramsey is not the second best corner in the NFL. He's not. He's not. Then where is he? It's Patrick Sertan. Three? See, he can be three or four. Whatever you want to do with Darius Slay, it's up to you. So you have I, an issue? Let me just let me look this up for a second. Because Patrick, Patrick Sertan, I know he's a top three, four corner, but better than Ramsey? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's a new league. New, Jalen that, Ramsey, two years ago, best corner in the NFL. No problem saying that. What did Sertan do to take that away from him? Patrick Sertan's been the best corner. Arguably, one of the two, three best corners in the NFL since he started in Denver as a rookie. He walked in day one, was a top ten corner. Yeah, I agree with that. Year two, top five corner. Year three, I'm putting him at two. And the <laughs> only reason why is because Sauce Gardner had a year that nobody's had at that position in a very long time. The last corner I can remember that was taken that high and was that productive and lived up to all the hype I guess you could say Jalen Ramsey, to be fair, because he was taken fifth overall by Jacksonville. But even further than that, I would say Chan Bailey was the last one I can really remember getting taken so high and living up to the billing day one with Washington and then obviously had a great career in Denver. Sauce Gardner is the fucking truth, man. And that that I I don't disagree with. I, I, I We've been high on Sauce even ever, ever since he was drafted. So I, I'm cool with him being one. I don't have an issue with that. I think Jalen Ramsey is two. Um, even last year, you look at Patrick Sertan and Jalen Ramsey, I mean, I, I know stats aren't everything, and Sertan, especially in coverage, he's, he's always been solid. But even last year, Jalen Ramsey overall had a better season than Sertan, even at 28 years old. And I know he's had some slip-ups, but overall he had more picks, more pass deflections, more forced fumbles, more tackles. Uh, Patrick Sertan made an all-pro, and you could argue in his division he had to face tougher competition, which is fair in, in, in what division. He played on a 3-1 team when it was all-pro. Think about that. Which is crazy. That defense last year kept them in pretty much every single game. But... You can't deny, man. Jalen Ramsey. I don't know what I'm he did to, to lose it. I'm not denying anything. I just I don't think and he's the second best. And whether it's one spot or not is fair. I have a bigger issue with the people more so down the list. Uh, Stephon, Stephon Gilmore, one of the best corners of, of this decade. But over the last couple years, is it just me or is Gilmore kind of slowed down? He's, he's still top six. I think six. he's slowed down, but what's happened is he's now getting a fresh start. And I think people so, are going to so, be... Because you're on the Cowboys, now you're top yeah, six. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. America's team, I mean, now you're a top six corner. Like, I, better than Lattimore, uh, Trayvon, I, I, listen, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to argue Trayvon. J.C. Horn, like the other corners in the league, I don't know. That That's the problem I have. But overall, I don't have an issue with Darius Slay. Anybody miss the, uh, miss the list for you? Like um, for me, Jamel Dean, I get it, no problem having him at 10, but... Mm -hmm. I look at guys like a DJ Reed. He had a hell of a season yeah, with the that, Jets. There's another one, Tyson Campbell. Tyson uh, Campbell had a hell of a yeah, year. That's that's another one that I mean, so, consistently is good every single year. So yeah, look, a lot of good corners in the NFL today, especially the the guys that ended up being the sons of former corners. It that's always my, works out. That's my favorite thing. You have Patrick Sertan, Asante Samuel Jr. I love it. 
I love it. And Joey it makes Porter, me feel old though. Joey Porter Jr. in in Pittsburgh, I think will be another one in a couple of years. Yep. You'll look and then he got J.C. Orm, but his father was a wide receiver, so you know, whatever. NFL player, we'll just say yeah. they always end up working out somehow. All right, fair enough. All right, let's go to some callers. JB, who do we got on the line? All right, I Fuck will it. send you guys. If it's about Ron. Killian Hazel, I'm hanging up right away. <laughs> I'll send you guys Ron. All right, Ron, you're on the morning show. What do you got for us, buddy? All right, so this is my first time being the call in and actually be calm because it's not the, the football season, so I'm enjoying that. <laughs> Good morning to you guys. I don't want you guys thought. I haven't, I haven't heard y'all bring this up. I think last year, if we had money, we would have won 28 to 30 games instead of 17. That's how much better he is than Dwayne Casey. Mm-hmm. I, 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 uh, I, can, I can get with that, Ron. I can get with that. So I think that – I say – 35 wins next year. That's what I'm looking at. 35 wins, healthy K. I think they should trade away the, the fifth pick, bundle that with somebody else in the way, Killing Hayes and Isaiah Stewart, send those bums away, and package that fifth pick, get something decent. You win at least 35 games next year. Ron, I love you. You're my brother from another mother. That's the shit I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit I want to hear. Yeah, you said exactly what he was on Adam's <laughs> mind. Uh, but, Ron, I agree with you. And, and you look at yep. Monty, uh, his first season with Phoenix, he took that team from 19 wins to 34 wins instantly. So the impact of having a good coach, I'm all, I'm yep. all, I'm, I'm with you. Last year, they won to one more games because with Monty in what his strength is, which is offensively, this team lacks an offensive identity. So if he was here last year, they would be better. And this yep. year, I, I'm with you. I think 30 plus. Is the, is the measuring stick for me. I think 20-something wins, I'd still be a little disappointed given they've gotten better and you have Cade hopefully oh, healthy. Yeah. yeah, I'm all for it. I think 30-plus is, is where I'm aiming for. And I think he could do it. Monty's going to have that Fair type enough. of impact. I do Fair believe enough. that. Appreciate the call, Ron. Well done, buddy. Yeah, call back, Ron. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that you calling. All right. All right. JB, Always, a lot of people... Yes, sir. JB, a lot of people in the chat saying you sound like Ron or he sounds like you. Oh, really? What do you have to say for that? Well, I, I wasn't on the phone with you guys. Oh, well. <laughs> JB's no, so honest. That I have no me. idea what you're talking about there. I, you know? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Look, JB, I want to ask you a question while we're on the Monty Williams uh, subject. What's up? Uh, you said you agreed with my timeline, which is fair. Fine. I'll, I'll take it. But what do you want to see year one? What does JB want to see? Avid Piston fan. Loves the team. What are you? What are you looking for? I know we always talk about player development, such an overused word, but you know, what are you looking to see out of this basketball team year one with Monty Williams? Honestly, how it's going to work on the floor with Ivy, Kate, and Duran. If you can sit here and focus on these three players, who are essentially your soon-to-be star players of this team. See how well they work together. See how well they can gel and flow together. And see if there's anything you can add to their game to help improve them to work well on the floor. Other than that, it's, as you said, the player development. Seeing what Monty Williams can install in these players that we haven't seen from the past coach that we were hoping so much for for this team. So give me how they work and figure out a little bit and gel a little bit together on the floor a lot more. And just having them back fully healthy would be nice, you know? So should we make everybody happy here and go to Troy Weaver and say, hey, we'll hire your buddy Kevin Ali as the assistant coach? Is that the move? <laughs> no. Play kumbaya it, moment? In the, in, in, have God on the assistant side of uh, of Monty he Williams? He can be in the front office if you want him. There you go. I mean, That'd everybody's be. got a job. I could get a job in the Pistons front office no, at this you point. Could, no, you couldn't. Got not. John Beeline, Dwayne Casey. Fuck it, add Kevin Ali to the front office. Well, I, just to speak on that, too. For before people actually believe that you know Troy Weaver looked at Tom Gores and said no no to Monty I want my guy Kevin Ali I think a lot of that the, didn't happen no it didn't but I'm just saying people think that Kevin Ali was Troy's guy and that was the only guy he was willing to hire or he wanted part of it is also you have to understand from Troy's perspective he's looking at it I'm just assuming but you have to Monty is he realistic is that a realistic option for us besides Monty who's the guy he wants maybe it's Charles Lee maybe it's Kevin Ali it was reported it was Kevin Ali whatever it is yeah now well, that Monty's the head coach you don't think Troy's happy he's ecstatic I'm sure he's this is happy, the best but possible Troy Weaver coach you is gotten. not a billionaire right so he can't just pull out his balls and put them on the table right that's Tom come Gores. work for me right but that's I don't what want, Tom Gores I don't want that do. narrative to get out there like Troy he doesn't want Monty he wanted Kevin Ali no no, no, no I don't think that's a narrative no Kevin Ali was the guy that he preferred but Monty is much better we can all agree there 
He, I'm sure he's okay with that. a proven commodity as well. Yeah, I'm not buying into that. I, I do buy in, though, that Kevin Ollie would have been Troy's choice had this fallen through. And that's fair. fair. Yeah, no Monty at all. No Monty. I, I think that's the choice. But thank God that's not a conversation we have to have this morning. Yeah, thank goodness. JB, who do we got on the line? All right, I will send you guys Fletch from Florida. All right, Fletch from Florida. You're on the morning show. What do you got for us, buddy? Good morning, guys. How y'all doing this morning? Good. How are good, you? Good, good. Sounds like we're all doing good, man. I'm so pleased with this hire, man. Tom Gore's really stepped up to do something that this team needed. We needed a quality coach that has a proven track record. Mm-hmm. And you guys have been mentioning it this morning. Um, I think we got to get some defensive players, whether we draft them or acquire them. I think we really need some defense, man. And uh, going in the draft, I think what you guys are talking about – some players and just get rid at number five. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think d- defensively, that's the biggest thing. I'm besides having an offensive identity, but defense and, and like Adam kind of alluded to before, a lot of it is effort. Uh, you need the right personnel, obviously, and they lack that. Uh, but that's something they're going to have to address in, in fridge C and through the draft. But I'm with you. I think the pick at five, as much as I want someone who could shoot. Part of that is also you you got to be a great defender or somebody that has intangibles or the length to be a good defender. So uh, I'm with you, Fletch. That's probably the next the next uh, um, the next task the Pistons are going to have to do is go get guys that can defend. Period. Because we can't have a season like we had last year. You can't win 30 plus games if you are giving up 125 a game. It just ain't going to happen. Right, and I, I'm really impressed with Gore's stepping up. Um, Absolutely, this is his team to take a year off in the NBA is ridiculous. You have to be ready to do something every year. You know, whether you succeed or not, that's to be seen, but you got to be ready to do something. Why waste that time? Like you guys talking about the, the value of the team. It only goes up if you get better. Yep. Um, and uh, my other thing is uh, with Cade, do you see, if he is not completely healthy, do you see an issue with him in the future? Or have you heard anything about his health issues, you know, getting better? So, um, I, I've heard something. Okay, because um, I've talked to Cannon and them, the family. Okay, I've talked to uh, just Beats in the area, and mm-hmm. obviously our own Beat reporter, uh, Kool-Aid. Yeah. So the surgery went well. Uh, how long-term it is and how long-term of a fix it is is to be determined. Could be six, seven, eight years before he starts having issues with his shin again. Who knows? That's what I've heard. Um, look, if... if how do I say this nicely? Because I really love Kate. If Kate is going to struggle with injuries in his third season and miss a significant amount of time, I don't think it's the end of the world. I just think it makes year four, five, six, and seven much more <laughs> under the microscope. I think we all agree when Kate's on the court, he's a phenomenal basketball player. I don't think that's a conversation. We all like Kate Cunningham a lot. Whether or not he's going to be healthy. That's going to be the main concern. What have you heard from his family? I'm curious about that, Jeff. Yeah, and, and again, from just from the family and what they've told me and, and told Kool-Aid as well, uh, he's healthy. He's feeling great. He's already working out. He's, he's you know, upping his, his workouts and the intensity um, over the last couple of months. And also, Cannon referred to it as a blessing in disguise because his body was telling him something, and then he went down with an injury, missed the whole year. So I think overall he's gotten stronger. You look at Cade, I think overall physically it's helped him a lot. Uh, but I don't have any concerns about him staying healthy for the future. Now if that if that happens, it happens. But he's not a player that's been injury prone his whole career. He's just had that you know stress fracture. Besides that, he's been healthy. He had he tweaked his ankle at the beginning of his rookie year, but. He's an all-star yeah, caliber he's, player. He's not a I think guy we've who's seen in enough. and out of the lineup consistently, so I don't have any concerns. 15-5-5 five five his rookie year. Before he went down last year, it was essentially 26-6. and six. I mean, Kate Cunningham is an all-star caliber player in the NBA when healthy. Yeah, he's... The win healthy part is the only conversation anybody can hold to, really against <laughs> any of us at this point. Is he going to be healthy? I think we all hope so. I think he will be, Fletch. And to finish it off, I would say... It's not the end of the world also because if you look back at the Steph Curry contract and some of the things that happened because he was injured and he missed yeah, games. All those ankle injuries. It allowed some things to transform and transpire, excuse me, over the next four, five, six years and they ended up being able to get Kevin Durant because of those injuries. So, you know, never say never. I really think Kate Cunningham's a great player. I think he has 
star potential, 100%. Let's just hope he goes out there and he's healthy, Fletch. Appreciate the call, buddy. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you yep, all. Yep. Go Gators. Take care. I wish Gabby was here to talk shit about that. <laughs> Go Gators. Oh, God. You know what's funny, by the way? Uh, we got to go to break, but Gabby is the biggest Florida Gator, ha uh, Gator hater. Well, I'll say that fucking quick. I've ever met in my life. I've never seen somebody despise Florida as much as Gabby. Ever. Ever. And she doesn't hate anybody. She's like a, you know, a little angel. Doesn't hate anything. Gets mad at you when you step on an ant. And then there's Hates the, the Florida then there's Gators. The Florida Gators. Anthony Richardson. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's your favorite quarterback. Line should have traded up to one to get him. Isn't no. that what you said? No, I did not say that. <laughs> I did not. That is a lie. Oh, God. All lie. right, we'll take a break when we get back. When we get back, we'll continue on with the Monty Williams Detroit Piston conversation. I want to get to Austin Matthews potentially being mm. a Detroit Red Wing. I'm desperate. You know what? I'll can I play GM when we do this, and you could pitch me, and I'll. I'll All right, nine fifteen. Okay. We'll do this. I'll, I'll do the Neil rule. You All right, pitch me the trade, and I'm I'm Toronto. We'll make it happen. Then okay. we'll continue on with the show. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends, over. At Big Boy. Let me tell you about him. Strawberry Fest is officially back at Big Boy. Yeah, try classic breakfast items like some strawberry hotcakes or mouth-watering red velvet waffles. But again, if you're not feeling breakfast, they got lunch and they got dessert. With lunch, you can get strawberry bacon chicken wrap or you can cool off with a refreshing summer splash salad. Uh, with dessert, they're very delicious classic strawberry pie, deep-fried vanilla Oreos, or strawberry hot fudge cake. And so much more at Big Boy. How would you like to win not one, but two vehicles of your choice? One for you and one for your wife, your girlfriend, or your best bud. Get to Lady Jane's today for an award-winning haircut and automatically enter for your chance to win. Courtesy of Les Stanford Buick GMC of Ferndale. Lady Jane's. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Since the dawn of moving people, Chevrolet has led the way. The world of transportation is changing. At Feldman Chevrolet, we are leading the charge forward. With every electric vehicle, every mile traveled, one Feldman at a time. The company that puts more Chevys on Michigan roads is now the number one name for Chevy electric vehicles. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. All right, I want to play NBA GM with Jeff a little bit. Welcome back. Top of the hour. We got 58 minutes left. I want to make the most of it, so we'll get started right away. Jeff, I'm Troy Weaver today. Okay. And you are... Opposing GM. My The angel on my right shoulder. Okay. And you tell me if this is the right move or not. All right. I trade Boyan Bogdanovich, the fifth overall pick, and Killian Hayes for Mikel Bridges and Cam Thomas from Brooklyn. Would you do the trade? If I'm Brooklyn? You hang up on that? I'm really? hanging up on that. 100%. Well, yeah. Mikel Bridges is one of the best two-way players in the league. I know. That's why I'm asking. I, I'm, I, well, I, if I'm Troy, yeah, I'm ecstatic. You get rid of Bojan, who's saying. aging, uh, Killian in a first-round pick. I'm just saying. If I'm the Nets, I'm saying, <clears throat> no, thank you. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. So what's going to happen with Cam Tom, uh, excuse me, Cam Johnson this offseason? Now, They're that's gonna, interesting. That's, that's the question, because I think the Nets will match. Yeah. I think that's a fair assumption. Expected. Right? Unless They're going to pay for him. Yeah. They're going to pay for him. Is that a player you can trade for? Like, to me, what's running through my head now is how do I get rid of Bogdanovich and that fifth overall pick? And how do I flip it into a quality player? Maybe Mikel Bridge is too good. Maybe you you're right. Potentially Maybe you could. hang up the phone. But who else could it be? That's where my brain is going this morning. I think at Mikel Bridges, I think at Cam Johnson, I think the Nets are a great trade partner in this scenario. Do they want Boyan Bogdanovich? Eh. But if you're the Nets... You don't really want to trade Mikel Bridges. That's your no. one core piece. And if you're going to, it would have to be for an Ivy. It'd have to be for somebody you're getting back. Yeah, which you're not going to do. Yeah, you're not going to do. So, Because, um, again, Mikel's, what, 20? 20, 
25, 26? Yeah, a 25-year-old who's, yeah, what is he, 26. There you go. With a 7-foot-1 wingspan who's at, who took off last year. I, I, don't, I don't see that scenario happening. Although I love Mike Kelly. He's a perfect player for this, for this team, but I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it make sense because that same roster, if it's on the court next year, is marginally better. Yeah. Six, seven games. That's why I told you 26 wins. How does Troy change it all? Mm -hmm. What team are you going to go shop a fifth overall pick to and they're going to love it? You, I agree with you. The fifth overall pick doesn't do much for me if I'm Brooklyn. Right. Now, what does that mean? Eh. I got Cam Johnson and Mikel Bridges. I'm feeling really good about that. Ben Simmons, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do there, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Seriously, so what, what do I do if I'm the Pistons where I can go out and get a player that I'm really going to like? What, do I have to settle for? What's his face? Fat guy. Undersized. Boston Celtics. Forgetting Grant his name. Grant Williams? Grant Williams. <laughs> you said... <laughs> <laughs> do yeah. I have to settle for Grant Williams? That's it, not going to do anything for me. That's not moving the needle. That's yeah, it's not, it's not making you... It's not making the team better. It's a little better, but not a Man. playoff. You're not a, a contender. Man, I'm looking for a quality player. Right, I got Marvin Bagley. I got... Uh, let me. I mean, trade assets on this team: Marvin Bagley, Boyan Bogdanovich, Killian Hayes, and Isaiah Stewart. Those are the pieces I think you can trade, and I think teams would at least answer the phone for. Probably not going to get what you want to get. Definitely not going to get Mikel Bridges. But does Brooklyn match the Cam Johnson contract and then say that's a lot of money over the next four years? We're willing to take a, a bird deal on a on a Killian Hayes, the fifth overall pick, and someone else. Right. Meh. Because they do lose that trade in theory unless the fifth overall pick is another Cam Johnson. So that's the conversation I think you have to have in Detroit is, is there someone that's going to be available at five this year that you really like? Mm -hmm. And they can play that role two-way, can hit the, hit the three ball. And if the answer is yes, is he good enough to do that? At an okay level year one, and then a pretty good level year two. And if the answer to that is yes, then I think you keep the pick. Right. But if the answer to that is no, or I'm not sure, you got to explore all trade options. Bogdanovich, the biggest issue he has, he costs you $20 million a year. Which means you're going to go out and get a pretty damn good player who's going to match that contract. Right. And that's where giving up a fifth overall pick, some futures, it might play. Might be in play here. I don't know. But I'm asking you, Jeff, how do you overhaul this roster? It's not good enough right now. No, it's not. Uh, and again, free agency, I don't think it's... You, you can't go find a savior in free agency. So it's going to have to be by trade. And that's why, you, if you aren't, haven't already seen the reports, Troy's at least open to shopping that fifth overall pick. And the question is always, if you don't want the fifth overall pick, then who wants it? And I think that's a, a legitimate question. Now with Monty Williams, I'm more on the side of just selecting whoever it is at five because I do think for the role we're looking for, you would agree, and, and most Pistons fans would agree, a 3 and D wing with length that can defend, that can shoot the, the ball, there's going to be guys there at five you can take. Now the question is, you know, does what's the timeline look like? Are you willing to be patient with another top five pick? Uh, it won't take him years to get there, but it will take a year or two before he even starts turning into the player we, you thought he was at five. So you're going to have to be a little patient. Now, if you don't have any more patience and you want to speed this thing up, maybe you shop the fifth pick around and there's a, 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 not a superstar, but maybe a star player or somebody on the brink of being a star that a team is trying to trade and you could package the fifth overall pick and Bo Yan or whoever to go get. Now, depends on who it is because if you get to Jalen Brown and you get to that territory, you're going to have to give up somebody. A Jay Nivey, unfortunately. I know, I know Cade's untouchable, Ivy's untouchable, Duran's untouchable, but it's going to be hard to get a deal done besides any of those guys. It's not as easy as, you know, we'll, we'll keep Ivy, Duran, and Cade, and you could have Killian, Bojan, and a first-round pick. It's not going to happen. So I'm curious what route they go with Monty Williams. I'm more open. You saw what Monty did with Michael and Cam. Turn those guys into pretty damn good role players. And now Michael Bridges is thriving in Brooklyn. So with Monty, I'm open to the idea of, of taking someone at five. I think it'll, it'll be just fine. But I'm curious. Troy might look at it like, you know what? Let's get this thing started. Maybe we can flip that fifth pick and other assets for somebody. But the question is who? You know, there's always the, yeah, trade the pick. 
my my question is always for whom and you're going to find that out over the summer but for agency yeah to, to act like you're going to go from a team that has the fifth overall pick to a contender with just free agency doesn't always happen unless you're overpaying for guys and because detroit right now as a destination isn't as is intriguing as it was it's a little more intriguing with monty but you, you can't go find a savior in free agency you got to go trade for somebody so whoever that is um they'll find out i got a tough time looking around the league right now and saying yeah that that guy's available or maybe they would consider the nets have all the cream like uh, the crop that you want you just can't get them they're going to match Cam Johnson, 100%. Most likely, yeah. They, I would doubt they let him walk for free after trading, right? That whole right. ordeal. They have a ton of... Ah, man, Brooklyn is set up with some nice assets. How do they get that star player in there? Because Ben Simmons ain't going to do shit. The Bulls are impossible to trade with. The Magic, you, you're not going to trade with. You're not trading with anybody in the Western Conference, I think. Outside of what, maybe San Antonio and Minnesota, but well, then what are they going to give you? Right. Like it, you're not going to be going after teams with a young core. I'm, you're going to have to go after a team that is trying to get rid of their already productive players to maybe head into a rebuild or tool a, retool a little bit. You're not going to look at Orlando, Brooklyn, teams that have young cores and say, all right, give me one of your players and I'll give you an aging player in a fifth pick. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Most of these teams, like Brooklyn or Orlando, want to keep that core together. Yeah. Uh, it just so again, it's it's about distressed assets. Who's the assets. best three point shooting prospect that can be available at five, in your opinion? Well, the best three point shooting prospect uh, available at five would be probably a Taylor Hendricks. Uh, he shot the highest percentage. Now there's guys that shot decent percentages, but might be better defenders. A Jarris Walker, Cam Whitmore, much more athletic, but still the best three-point shooters, Hendricks. I mean, he shot 40% um, at UCF this year, and he checks, again, I'm going to keep saying it, he checks a lot of boxes for me. Now, upside, I know everyone gets obsessed with upside. I don't, I don't care about upside. Okay. I have upside in my backcourt. There court. you go. Okay. I have upside so at the so five. So we cleared that. So you're, you, We you're, agree with that. Yeah, Fair? Yep. You're looking for a player that can fit the specific role you're I looking want, for. And Taylor Hendricks to me is that guy Cam Whitmore you're going to hate me for guy? saying this because I don't mean it in terms of the player because he's so good but I'm talking about fit mm -hmm. how good of a fit is Michael Porter Jr. with Denver that's I think what you're looking for a guy that works so well without having the ball too much with Cade and Ivy running the ball all the time that to me is everything mm -hmm. Kate and Ivy are going to be my primary ball handlers. How do I set them up for success, Jeff? How do I space the court? That's where, you know, even an Isaiah Stewart coming off the bench, right? His three-point shot has gotten so much better over the years, right? So now he's a threat to stand at the corner. And now you don't have anybody in the paint, which means Ivy can attack the basket. Right. Cade can attack the basket. Now when Duran's on the court, I think that's when you bring him up to the perimeter. You run that pick and roll. And then it's if they close down on you, you dish out. And who's that shooter? Is it Hendricks? Great. I actually agree with you here. He's a really good fit. I don't care if he's going to be... I, I'm not trying to draft another all-star. I'm trying to draft a really damn good basketball player that I can rely, excuse me, rely on to hit three-point shots. That, to me, is like the most important thing. And can they translate on the defensive side and play defense? Well, that was Mike Hill coming out of Villano uh, Villanova, Mike yep. Hill Bridges. Then he turned into now what he is. Of course. So, I mean, you, that's nice. Right. I would love that. Don't get me but wrong. They but they didn't draft Mike Hill knowing he'll be a, an all-star. Now you know that. So a, a lot of the upside stuff kind of gets lost. You look at measurables. You look at the abilities that the, these prospects have. Taylor Hendricks, to me, 6'9", can shoot the ball, can defend, um, has length and size. I mean, he's got over, I believe, a 7-foot wingspan. So those things are intriguing to me. Now, the, the upside stuff you can get into, but uh, that – that kind of gets lost. You get so obsessed with upside that you lose some of the other things. What player can come in day one and make an impact? Austin Reeves, baby. He, he, <laughs> Give him the well, super fucking match. Yeah, well, that he's a he's <laughs> he's a quite the exception. But I'm joking. Taylor Hendricks, Jarris Walker, Cam Whitmore. I'm cool with all these guys. It, Thompson twins are up there too. Uh, but regardless, they got a lot of three and D wings at their disposal. So at five, whoever they take, it'll be a solid player. Yep, fair Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Fair enough. Let's take a break. When we get back, I want to take a break from the Pistons, and let's move on to the Red Wings. Austin Matthews. You look at the way the Wings are constructed now. They're a bit away. You don't have an electric, reliable goal scorer. And Toronto is Toronto. 
how possible is Austin Matthews? We'll get to that next. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends over at Swiss Insurance. Let me tell you about them, guys. Swiss Insurance, Troy Weaver, drafting the best potential player. What about drafting the best potential insurance and getting the most cost-effective plan like Swiss Insurance? Contact them, mark at SwissINS.com. That's mark at SwissINS.com. Or go to www.SwissINS.com for more information. By now you know me, Christina Gennari, as the obvious choice in real estate. And you know my website, soldchristina.com, as your number one resource for buying or selling your home. Myself, along with my amazing staff, pride ourselves on making your home buying and selling experience a relaxing and easy one. Come see why we are the obvious choice. Christina Gennari at soldchristina.com, the obvious choice in real estate. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show live. WoodwardSports.com. As always, Adam Badu and Jeff I am Freddy on a beautiful Thursday morning, 9.15. I want to switch over to the Wings for a little bit, just a few minutes on it, Jeff. Uh, the Wings are in a weird situation. Mm-hmm. All right, Lucas Raymond. I think we all love Lucas Raymond. I think we all think he can be an exceptional goal scorer in the NHL. Uh, undersized a bit, five foot eleven, uh, has been injured. Not, maybe not as severe of an injury. You know, he's missed eight games last year, but you know he had that spell where he got injured, and then he came back and he went on this insane run of no goals. Had a huge goal drought. Mm-hmm. And I look at a Lucas Raymond, 23 goals his first year, 17 in his second. That to me can be a 30 goal scorer in the NHL. And I need more of those. Right. And I I really, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think Austin Matthews is fucking realistic. Okay. Because I'm not giving up Mo Sider. Okay. Well, there and that you go. is the kingpin trade piece that the Red Wings will ever have. He is, in my opinion, untouchable. Dylan Larkin's a second-line center, if we're honest. He's not a superstar. He's not a Matthew Kachuk. He's not Huberto. He's none of these guys. Is he a 100-point getter? Is Dylan, Dylan Larkin really good? Yeah, he's a really good hockey player. But how are the Red Wings ever going to make a deep run in the playoffs? I think that's the question I have right now. And I, it's not that I'm not... I don't believe in Steve Eisenman or how he's playoffs. drafted. No, no, no. None of that. None of that. Really like the coach. But I need goals, man. And I don't know where the fuck I'm going to get them. <laughs> Honestly. I have no idea where I'm going to get them. Perron, really good year one. Had a hell of a season this year. He's old. Not getting any younger. Right. How many seasons, uh, what he did this year, can you count on? Maybe next year, for sure, I can count on. And then I'd have to question after that. Right. Right. Steve Eisenman went out in free agency and got some quality players. That's not the issue. Mm-hmm. I need ruthless goal scorers. I got a lot of guys that can pass the puck. A lot of guys that can do the dirty work. A lot of guys that play hard, skate well. I don't have many goal scorers. I don't have many snipers. I don't have guys that can put it in 35-plus goals a year consistently. Right. I hope Lucas Raymond can do it. But he even struggles to score on the power play for fuck's sake. He's only got five goals in each of his first two years. Yeah, that's still that's still an like issue. Five and, a year? That's it? And Mike G's comment too, Adam, Austin is unrealistic, but Marner and Nylander might be in our wheelhouse. That's the thing, because they're going to have to get yeah. rid of them because of the money situation. Right. That is fair. Now that's but more again, realistic. Do I want to pay second line guys first line money? I'm doing it with Larkin. Say you add a Mitch Marner and your team's a lot better. But that's another nine to ten million, no? What's Mitch Marner gonna cost? Eight and a half, nine, nine and a half million a year? You can get paid. Someone's gonna pay him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, hey, here's your pitch to Detroit, Mitch. Come play with Dylan Larkin. Okay. Then what? Then all the money's gone? Well I have to pay Mo Sider in a few years, and he's gonna be one of the best defensemen in all of the NHL. And I'm going to have to pay his ass. Yeah, and but the, the other thing for the Red Wings is they have a ton of draft capital now and, and intriguing young talents. So sure. If you sure. can get, and I, uh, for, especially for, for Nylander or 
uh, Mitch Marner. I mean, you're, I mean, you have Nylander coming off 40 goals, 47 assists. I mean, 87 points. Marner, 60, 99 points. So as, as I, I agree. Austin Matthews is unrealistic to me. I know Big D had this conversation, and, and Neil Rule played the Toronto GM, and nobody could make a pitch without adding Mo Sider. You can't. You yeah, can't. I agree It's with unrealistic. That. But you got a Nylander, a Marner. Maybe you could sweeten it up a little bit. I agree Mo Sider's untouchable, but you're, you need a goal scorer, and, and you got two right now in the Maple Leafs you could try yeah, and go but get. And they have draft capital. Mitch Marner's a baby. I think that's what intrigues me the most about Marner. He's 26 years old. Mm-hmm. He's coming off a, what, God, 69 assist season, 30 goals, my go, almost 26, 100 points. 26, yeah, years old. So, to me, Marner's the one I want between the two. Mm-hmm. But again, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. For two guys, and I need goal scorers. Marner's not getting 69 assists his first year in Detroit. No. It's probably going to be along the lines of 47, maybe upwards of 50 to 52. But at least it's somebody else you can consistently trust, um, which is something the Red Wings don't have a ton of right now. Yeah, I think the... Verona was supposed to be that guy initially, yeah, but Verana, things didn't God work out. Him. I so. hope he's doing well, but look, you need goal scorers. You need guys that have a uncanny knack of just putting the puck in the net mm-hmm. and you don't have that right now and i hope lucas raymond like you really want me to believe that there's something on the other side lucas raymond comes out and has a 32 33 goal season i'd feel really good about that yeah i'd feel really good nine to ten power play goals would be awesome even seven i'll take damn it but i need to see i need to see more goals uh, I need to see more goals. And then Sebastian Costa is probably going to get the call up this year, towards the end of the year. And then hopefully he's the number one a year from after this year. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you have something that you're working towards and it looks really good. And you're a team that's in the playoffs. And maybe you can get out of the first round, but you're still missing that edge. I love this comment. Justin No says, uh, WilmerSports.com, Leafs will keep Marner and Matthews. I think Nylander is the one who's out. I would, if, I was, uh, if I was Toronto, I'd do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, he's coming off 87 points last season, so I'm all for Who, it. Marner or? Yeah, uh, Nylander. Yeah, Nylander. And he's a little no. older, though, Twenty, but he's only a year older than him. He's 27, so um, either way. Uh, and, and again, in this situation, Eisenman, if he identifies a player like Nylander or Marner, he got the assets to go get him. And I think especially if, if you don't, I don't think you'd have to throw in Mo Sider in that deal, especially for those two. Maybe you do. If you do, then no, I'm, I'm good. Uh, but Stevie's spent time now building the, the draft capital arsenal for moments like this. So um, he's got options. He's got flexibility. And who else you want in this position but Steve Eiserman. So The Wings got about what? And they still got projected, money. Projected, what, $30 million in cap yeah, space? They, yeah, they, they do. got a lot of money. They got money, draft capital. They got money, but they got a lot of young talent. Yeah, they and do. And that young talent's going to get paid in the coming years, mm-hmm. right? So, God, I, I just wish there was a easy way to project the Red Wings right now. Like, your hope, to me, your lifeline is Lucas Raymond lives up to a 30-plus goal scorer a year in the NHL. Yep. You have a few prospects that come up and shine, and they're better than what you even thought they would be. Yeah, Johnny. And then you go land a quality player in free agency again. But, and, and then the other players that you've kind of seen a little bit of, Edvidson, uh towards the end of last season, Marco Casper, uh, even Johnny Burgers, who, who DMAC calls him. These guys, if they continue to flourish, Kuba League. Yeah, Bagrin was a really good goal. He, he, he was solid, found too. Found a way, 100%. So there's, there's a lot of... Uh, Andrew Kopp was a good signing in free agency the right. other year. So, again, there's pieces here. But you don't have that just first-line son of a bitch that is so good <laughs> and so reliable. Right. right? Florida has Matthew Kachuk. They have Bobrovsky as their goaltender. Yeah. That's a game-changer alone. Right, you look at the Vegas Golden Knights, a very well put together team. They're not young at all. They're very mature, rightfully so. They're in the Stanley Cup final. Mm-hmm. Fair game to them. How do I get there? As that's just my question: is how can I get closer to that? And a lot of it's on development, and I hate that. I can live with it. I can be patient. It's Steve Eiserman. I love the coach. Lalonde is great. Don't mind him at all. Right. Did a hell of a job year one. Love the way the team played, but. Fuck me. Fuck me. Let's take a break. 
We'll see if Casper turns out to be anything special. Lucas Raymond, though, this is the year. Mm -hmm. Got to come out and get 30 goals. Got to come out on fire, man. Can't go 15, 20 games on a goal drought. It's just unacceptable. Can't do that. We'll take a break. When we get back, uh, let's continue on the conversation with everything that's going around the NFL. And then we'll get back into the Pistons. But before we do, I got to tell you about my good friends over at Planet Fitness. If you're between the ages of 14 and 19, you can work out for free. So get your lazy asses to the gym. And do me a favor, go to planetfitness.com or go stop by any one of their many locations in the Metro Detroit area. And again, if you're a teenager between 14 and 19, up until August 31st, you can work out for free. You'll thank me later. Planetfitness.com, your fitness is essential. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. The only sports network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Woodward Sports, Detroit's winning sports network. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show, live woodwardsports.com. I'm proud to announce that my co-host, Jeff Iafredi, will no longer be at the Woodward Sports Network because he's a fucking drug addict. <laughs> what? And he can't stop hitting his goddamn vape during the breaks. So today will be Jeff's last day, and it's been a pleasure, buddy. Shannon Sharp. Where did this... Is this because of the Shannon Sharp news yep, now? 100%. If he's leaving, I'm leaving now? Yep. All right. You and Shannon Sharp are co-hosting. How does it feel? That'd be great. I'll take Shannon Sharp. All right. See you, Adam. We got Kool-Aid in the building, so we're going to punt away anything NFL-related. Kool-Aid! Kool-Aid! You look good. I just want to start by saying that. You look good. I, I love the shirt. That. I appreciate that. I love that. the shirt. I think it's the most overused fucking word. No! In no. Detroit. Shut up! It's the most overused fucking word in Detroit right now, but I can get behind it. I believe this morning. I have hope. Dick was super hard last night when they announced Monty <laughs> Williams. I slept like a fucking angel. Never felt better in my life. Okay? Having said that, Kool-Aid, walk us through the hire, the process, the decision. I think everybody's on board with it. What do you think? Bro, first of all, first of all, oh, gosh. I got to get the buffs on for Tom Gores, man. We're going to get there, though. But this hire, oh, my goodness. I, I'm, I'm still kind of speechless, even though Jeff... You know, Adam, we kind of talk about this stuff on the show. We talk about some of this stuff off the show. And we were saying this is what they have to do. It wasn't much hope as it relates to this team being a serious player sooner rather than later if they didn't go out there and prove that they were trying to win. You hear them talk about it in the front office. You hear the players talk about it. What are you going to actually do to go out there and, and make this thing work? And I was telling Flannel Sam, this type of a hire means that they have to go out there and do something equally as bombastic in free agency. They have to. That's what this signals to me, that this team and this organization, they are serious about actually going out there and punching the ticket on winning soon. And it shows that they do believe in that young core that we keep saying, like, you know what? We keep pondering, like, you know what? We got to see Cade, Jaden, and Duran. These are the draft picks. Whether they missed out on Wimby this year or not, they got to get something out of these guys. And I'm glad that they're stating and that they're showing with this hire all of that. I'm, I'm pumped up, man. Did, did you just say bombastic? Bombastic, bro. I'm, He's dropping bombastic. Okay, Adam, that, Adam, What bro, the fuck is that bro, word? Bro, we just talked about this yesterday, he, though. <laughs> Brother, we just talked about this yesterday. Which you part? Me getting hard? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm serious. No, we sat there uh, from... Brady, to you, to other people, and we were like, yo. Oh, yeah, I was on Suicide Watch. We were like, yo, we, we have to be kind of, we didn't know if we should be cautiously optimistic, cautiously critical. We knew that they had to get this hired. I, I even asked Brady, like, bro, what's going on? How you feeling? He was like, man, I think we're screwed. What? Like, Monty don't want to come here, but fans were like, bro, he's turning down the money. Adam was like, I don't see 
if we don't get Monty, so I don't see So let me that. let me ask you this. What what was the deciding okay, so listen, I think the obvious thing would be, well, you get a bag like that. Yeah. I think it's it's a little, a little easier to make a decision, but more than just the money, what was it for Monty? What made him finally think, you know what? I'll commit the next potentially eight years of my life and my coaching resume to the Detroit Pistons besides just getting the money. What was the other uh, motivating factor? It's not factors? money. He's getting bread from Phoenix. This was about, are you serious? Are you Detroit Pistons, Tom Gores, Troy Weaver? Are you serious about this? I think that that's what this was more or less about. If you think that I'm that guy and you're saying this, I don't want to just be a name. I want to know that you think I can go out there and, and create a program as powerful and as strong as what Popovich did out in San Antonio. The money that he has an opportunity to earn will net him, uh, if he gets it all, at least $1 million on average a year over Greg Popovich. That's insane. They're saying that this is what we see out of you, and I think that that's what this was about. How serious are the Pistons about seriously winning? I think that's been my biggest frustration is how can I take you seriously when you openly tank with no guarantees, by the way, that you're ever going to get the top pick, which is a whole different mind fuck in and of itself. <laughs> uh, how am I supposed to take you seriously when you give Dwayne Casey an extra year to go out and coach a very important, I would say, time period for this team because they're so young? And then Jeff points out the stats, 28th and ball uh 28th and passes 28th and basically every fucking statistical category when it comes to moving the goddamn basketball and they were mm -hmm. first in dribbles that's a problem so yeah prior to yesterday it was really hard for me to see where do they go what's the direction if it's not monty williams are we hiring the guy that preaches to god every fucking day if that's the case i'm probably jumping off the ambassador but that's not the case this morning kool-aid it's not there it's, actually it's should not. i think justified optimism and I, I gave Jeff my timeline. I want to know what you think of it. I think year one, 26 to 32 wins, I think is a fair number. I think year two, you can get into the play-in. And I think by year three, there's no excuse for Troy and Monty. If, of course, the biggest if is this backcourt is what we think it can be, that they can go out and win 50 games. I, I actually like that timeline. I think that your first year is right on. I, I told a couple people, into, including Lucas, it's got to be 30 wins for me. 30 wins. I, I, I want this squad to go out there. You got to chill on the light, punch. man. He's black. <laughs> go out there and actually punch the ticket, man. <laughs> go out there and punch the ticket on all this stuff. I love y'all. Seriously, go out there and prove that all of this stuff isn't just rhetoric because you have lost time. Last year was a lost time of a season, except for the fact that they got the the development out of Jay and Ivy, Duran, and Kay Cunningham is going to be healthy. Like, I, I can't speak on that enough. That trio is what this is all about and what they're saying that they absolutely believe in. Can you imagine if they didn't believe in those guys? We would be tremendously screwed. The belief in those guys has to matter, whether we dropped or not. And that's why I keep saying Monty is here. Because, look, it's fair to criticize Casey from an X's and O's standpoint, brother. It's right. completely fair. And the offense, how he used or utilized these young players is where I think Monty Williams actually is going to excel here in Detroit. So let me ask you with Cade and Jay Nivey, because that's the biggest thing. I mean, for the, for, for the Pistons to get to we ex where we expect them to be, it's based on those two guys turning into all-star, superstar players. So we can acknowledge that. And Monty... I think helps their on-court chemistry and hell even off-court for for what Monty and the questions he can answer for a mentor. He's the perfect guy. Yeah. Uh, but in your opinion, and like we kind of went through this uh, earlier in the show, Monty's impact on Devin Booker, mm. and Devin was always a, a, a talented player. He always was. It's, he's my favorite player to watch. You saw him a, a ton of years in Phoenix. But what changed with Monty is not only him being as talented as he is, but learning how to win. That was the biggest thing for Devin, learning and understanding how to win. And Monty helped him achieve that. What kind of impact will Monty have on these two players, Ivy and Cade, and not just them individually, but them playing together and speeding up that process of them being able to play together? I, I think the, the biggest thing that Monty is going to do for Cade and Jaden is giving them their independence on the court, mm -hmm. allowing their skills, their talents, their kind of their, their instinct – to be the thing that flourishes and making sure that the offense is something that puts them in our best position to do that. What we saw with Casey was something that was more um, get to your positions or play or fit yourself into uh, my style. What we're going to see out of Monty is something that more or less takes Kay Cunningham and makes him the connector and makes him the driver that we've been saying that he is. 
that's what you see in Phoenix. And what you also see in Phoenix is the ability to do that with multiple players who all need the basketball in their hands. Right. That's that's what's crucial here. So when you see like Devin Booker, when you see KD, when you see some of the other players they've had, um, you, you get a sense that he understands how to kind of mesh these guys. And, and I know that some people have talked about the, the whole DeAndre Ayton thing. Listen, Ayton is proving himself that he just is what he is. That, you know, I don't believe that that's something that is on Monty Williams at all. Everything else that we've seen out of him is that he gets the best out of his players and that he's pushing these teams, uh, honestly, to a higher limit offensively than any other squad. I saw Shams. Uh, he Sean said that uh, what he's the most winningest coach since 2021. Yes, he has, yeah, he's won the most games since yeah. 2021. Yeah, and, and you got to think about it. They haven't always had the best squads or the best teams. They've he's gone out there and he's gotten. Uh, you hear Devin Booker, but look at the other players. Oh, Chris Paul. But not even Chris Paul. Look at the other players down the bench. Look at how he's coached them. Look how he's coached them up. You know, we talk about these random players that come Cameron through here Payne. and torch us up. That's what I'm saying. Those types of guys too. So, the name that we're not really talking about, we talk about Kay, we talk about Jaden. What can he do for Killian Hayes? That's something that I want to see. What can he do for people like Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart, and the, honestly, the other draft picks that you got to get something out of? Yeah, you got fuck to. You. you have to. Whether you're no, trading it's... these guys or whether they're on the roster, if this coach can come in and improve on these players. You know what I do? If I'm Monty Williams, I call Killian Hayes, I say, Bonjour. <laughs> How are you, my friend? How is Paris? Hey, I have good news for you, buddy. I'm not going to trade you. Here's what we're going to do. You shoot the ball only two times a game. That is the most. You shoot more than two times, we cut you. That's what I do with Killian Ace. You can play defense, you can pass the ball, you shoot more than two times when cutting your ass. Okay, well. All right, anyways. Well, cool. it, 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 <laughs> can I just bring up this too with your point about Monty and the others? Because I think that's a great point. Like, for example, what he's done for Cam Johnson, Michael Bridges, yeah. Cameron Payne. That's who, that's what we're who, talking about. And, and by the way, Cameron Payne, who a lot of people f forget, was basically a forgotten commodity. I like, thought he was the, written off in the I, NBA. He was essentially written off. And, and this isn't Killing Hayes three years written off. I'm talking six, seven years in the NBA. No one cared for Cameron Payne. He was on multiple Ooh, teams. Wow. And he comes to Phoenix, and he's their most important player off the bench. So that's a great point. What he's done for guards. Chris Paul has talked a lot about it, not just with Phoenix, but back to New Orleans. Uh, he'd, he'd credited Monty for a lot of his development. So I think Monty, his impact on not just Cade and Ivy, but the rest of these young players, it's significant. And yeah. it, it really does not alter the expectations big time, but I think us talking about 30-plus wins, we say that before the head coach, but now it's gotten real with Monty. He's a guy that he took the Suns from 19 to 34 in, in one year. He can get this team to 30 wins at least that. next season. At I least. That. That's, all, that's all I'm asking for. Is that fair? 30 that's, wins. That's fair. That's, okay. I, I think that that should be the expectation, Adam. Trust me, out of all the things you've heard us say before, it was always with the expectation that this team has to be something good by year four, something where you know, all right, we can see what this squad is doing. That's what I believe we're going yeah, to see coming up here. I got him again. Cade and Ivy, that's the two. That's the backcourt. Does everybody agree? Yeah. That's the backcourt. No questions asked. We're not moving off any of them, right? Right. So cool. How do I set them up for success? I was telling Jeff this earlier. If Duren's on the court, he's going to come up to the perimeter. We're going to play pick and roll. And I need shooters on the wings, right? Yeah. Available and ready for whether it's Cade or Ivy handling the ball. When Duren's not on the court, and let's say it's Wiseman, but preferably Isaiah Stewart, and that three-point shot, which has gotten a lot better over the years. Well, now I got nobody in the paint. Isaiah Stewart's on the on the corner side of the uh, excuse me of the court, ready for the three-point shot. I got a lot of space for my guards. Now they move, but how do I add to that? How do I add spacing, ball movement? The ball stops to me with Boyan Bogdanovich. He needs to go. <laughs> Coming off the bench, I can live with Killian Hayes for a year. I don't fucking care. It's not the biggest make or break move in my opinion bogdanovich at 20 million is going to be hard to trade mm. maybe mm. if you package it with the fifth pick mm. i think it's more interesting I we'll see i don't think he's that hard to trade well what are you getting he... though because me and jeff kind of did this Bro, also give me any first round pick for boyan right now i like this draft now, who the hell shooter. can take on 19 million dollars up oh, uh, there are teams out there right now that need to win and want to win at the bottom of that first round when they're looking at their so you're draft looking at pick, what a portland you're looking at who 
Sheesh, man. I'm going to actually take a look at that. This is something that Rod Beard and I were talking about on Woodward Pistons podcast is that we believe some of these players that we have, though they can definitely serve a purpose, a guy like Bojan, you can't improve your starting lineup no. without honestly replacing either him or Isaiah Stewart. And we know what they think of Isaiah Stewart. I'm, <laughs> I'm not claiming to know anything, but let's just say what you're saying makes the most basketball sense. So, Isaiah Stewart provides value, can guard yeah. multiple positions, shoot the three ball, and he stays the fuck out of the way. Right. Right. I, Wiseman, I, I we'll see surprised. what Monty does with Wiseman. I yeah. don't know. But Bogdanovich, and Jeff made a good point, which was, you know, that was un Bogdanovich under Dwayne Casey may not be the same Bogdanovich under Monty. I think that's a fair point. But and with Cade as well. I just, right. I know for a fact Bogdanovich jacks up 15 plus shots a game. He's ball dominant, and the ball stops. It's not like he's moving the ball. And with Monty, that goes against his ethos. So, yeah, look, I, I see Bogdanovich being the first chess piece kicked off the board. And that's the thing. It, going into this draft, think about what you just said, chess pieces. When you talk about that, <laughs> Troy has moved into these drafts with weaker or lesser chess pieces and came away. Bagley's with gotta some go stuff. too, by the way. Well, that's he what can't fucking shoot either. That's what we talking about. You talking about chess pieces, whether they're here or whether they're traded. If they got some pieces for the draft. <laughs> I'm I sorry. Think, I'm just no, all I care about is making Ivy I'm, and Cade look the best you're they right. can look. No, I, I, that's and, and, all I care about. You're, you're in sure a large degree, you're well. right. And, you're you're right on some of this stuff. I'm telling you, these these assets that they have going into this draft, I'm not gonna be shocked or surprised if Troy goes out there and finds a way to get one or two more draft picks out of this thing you do have guys like Bojan who you can either keep or trade you do have guys like Bagley even Wiseman who you can keep or trade you got guys that you got to make decisions on like Killian and Isaiah Stewart yep we've been stating this is the last year you got to make a decision so Troy is going to be able to go out there and we see if he loves Sadiq Bay, I I can tell you none of these other draft picks underneath the top three are untouchable I mean, if they're, he they're traded not. Sadiq Bay, everybody except Duran, like you just said, Duran, Ivy, and Kate are off the market. Everybody else can get traded exactly. if he traded Bay. So and, I would agree with that. And Monty lights this all on fire. That's what I'm saying. Now, if before, Bojan would have been probably safer or some of these guys would have been safer maybe with a coach that the team has to grow with. Now, you actually have to go out and make shrewd decisions about your team. Because you have to win. You can't you can't sit here with Monty and now waste what another coach's career? I agree. But let me ask you this. You know something I don't know. Monty Williams, Troy Weaver, Tom Gore's in a room together. Yeah, they offered him the money, but he doesn't take the job just because of the money. He takes the job because I'm sure they pitched him. That backcourt can be a top three backcourt in the Eastern Conference in a few years. He pitched them that hey. Yeah, the roster is what it is now, but here's what we think we can do in the offseason. Here's who we think we can get. Right. Do you have anything to that extent behind closed doors on what happened and why Monty eventually did accept the job outside of the money? Because it is a lot of money. Uh, because remember, this, remember the, the, the report that came out that if they got Victor, they were all in on Monty. Yeah. They didn't get Victor, still got Monty. Well, what have we been saying? It's the refrain that we've been saying. This organization is doing things differently. It would be disappointing if they said, we didn't get the first pick, let's go home. That's that whole take my ball and go home mentality. I can't get with that. And they've done that for 15 years. This was a team that stated what they wanted, and they set the board appropriately. And that's what I stated. Rod made sure uh, from Detroit News that it was made known. You guys have to understand these three finalists are not the three finalists for the job. They have set this thing into layers, and they're going to do this full thing out until they get their number one on the board, mm -hmm. whoever's available. So Monty was always a target as soon as he became available. And there was some even some talk where on some of our shows before he became available where it was like, well, what if Monty becomes available? Well, what if he does? I always assumed that he was going to go after a squad that was ready to win a championship now, but that if the Pistons could successfully sell him on a program that – and you got to understand, this is the importance of a Casey. A coach has to know that they're truly a part of a program. The Pistons can now advertise that with John Beeline. They can advertise that with Casey. They can state, no, we like your ideas. We like your mentality. We like what you can bring to this organization. And honestly, that plays a big deal into what Monty Williams can do because this thing could go bad quickly. This thing could go bad. It could take a, like a one-year or two-year gap. Then all of a sudden, is Monty Williams on a hot seat? 
Well, based on what we've seen with Dwayne Casey, based on what we've seen with this organization, if you're a coach that's proving you can do what this organization is asking, they will look to kind of keep you around in this family uh, and continue to allow your basketball brain, your basketball mind, your acumen, who you are as a person to continue to pay dividends. And that, that's, that's what this thing is really, really about. This is what Monty saw was an organization, honestly, being a trendsetter and trying to do things differently in NBA. I wanted to ask too with Bojan, can I make an argument? Because the conversation about trading Bojan, I, I understand it. But if they wanted to trade Bojan, wouldn't they have done it last season when he's a little bit younger and he was playing well? Like, no. why wait now to trade him? No, because Dwayne Casey thought he was the best basketball player in the world. What are you but talking about? But that's not Dwayne's decision. Like right. what you know, you get what I'm. Doing? <laughs> I, why wait till till now to trade Bojan? Why give him an extension? Why hold him past the trade deadline? I personally want to see what Cade, Bojan, and Ivy can do. I do believe that guys like Burks and Bojan provide those professional shooters in the corners for them right now, uh, so that then the the triumvirate of guys like Duran, Ivy, and Cade can do things like pick and rolls, and they have their outlet shooters. And we know that Ivy and Cade, and even Duran from the mid range, they can all pick and pop. They can all shoot. Right. I think that those two guys provide you right now your best opportunity to go out there, honestly, and Who's run and Who's a better off-ball player for this team, Jeremy Grant or Boyan Bogdanovic? Oh, Jeremy. I like off, Jeremy. Off-ball player. <sighs> I'm not saying the more complete player. I'm talking a guy I tell shut the fuck up and sit in the corner. And let my guards who's, handle the ball. Who's more who's, able? Who's who, more reliable? How about this? Who's more willing to accept that role? It'd be Bojan at this It'd age, be at this point okay. in his career. It'd be so if we agree yeah. on that, then I can get behind Jeff's point, where he tells me, "Adam, relax on the Bojan trade talk." Yeah. And let's see what he looks like with Cade and Monty Williams, where Monty puts him in a position where Bojan's just a ready to shoot guy. Right. And if he's that Kool Aid, for twenty million a year, I can suck it up for a year, but. Yeah. At least I know my team's going to be a lot better. Those are the windows, though, right? Those are the windows. How many contracts are up now? A lot, a Those, lot of them. Uh, right, all at the same time. Yep. Troy is a wizard, bro. He did this on purpose. Look at the Pistons' contracts and look at all of the options they have the ability to exercise or not. Look at the people who are expiring right now, right when they're getting Monty Williams. So now the coach, the GM, the owner, and their whole slew of basketball royalty in their front office can all sit down and state where do we actually want to drive this bus because now the foundation is set mm -hmm. that's what it is you got your three players you have your head coach now go out there and, and augment this thing you're right now they can actually talk about augmentation like yesterday you were like we can't talk about what to put around them because we don't even know who the coach is going to be where they're going to drive this thing what the philosophy is going to be how serious are and they? i love what jeff now said. we know Monty's the offense he's bringing to Detroit yeah. is going to be a breath of fresh air. Hey, quote that, that ball one, Jeff. <laughs> isn't going to hit the court often, and I'm all for yeah. that. No iso ball, it's ball stopping. Like that's the opposite. Yeah. I mean, you it's have a intensive. Devin Booker. Obviously, you let him cook, but that's right. again different. That's not your your offense. You know, yeah. you and let bro, Devin Booker cook in crunch time. You let him cook. You know, when he's just trying to get a shot in the mid range. Fine, I can live with it. But you don't have that guy here. Look, no, I've been going. To LCA. Oh, what the, the hell the is all that? For years. I don't want it. We got to put some respect on T-shirt Times and that. T-shirt Times. Oh, bro, get the on. fuck out of here, man. Hey, come on. Let's, let's <laughs> you, you, Tom Gores? Let's get go. the Tom, Tom Gores T-shirts. Okay. Uh, that's what. What do you think he got the money for this Monty Williams hire, man? That man been when he robbed when he stole the Pistons from why, the Davidson why, man, family. That's why I got my my you know my my stuff on. This is this is bro. for the company, right? T-shirt time, bro. Shout yeah, out yeah. to you. T-shirt time. I'm Gores. The, the Get used Pistons. To it. I want to know what you think of this. He bought them for three hundred million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're worth one point nine bill. Okay. It, the crazy. He hires thing. Monty Williams for basically a hundred million over the eight years if it ends up reaching that and the incentives involved. Yeah. That hundred million is going to turn to four, five, six hundred million if they just make the playoffs twice in the next three, four years. So this team's value, and I use the Warriors as an example. They used to be worth four hundred million. Now they're worth seven point six billion. So Tom Gores doesn't give a fuck. I know everybody's like showing him a ton of love and respect, and I think rightfully so. It's a big investment. Good yeah. on him for really being out there and saying, "Damn it, I don't want Kevin Ollie. I don't want any of these guys. Go get me a proven coach, a guy that I know we can win with." Yeah. Respect to Tom Gores for that, but he's winning. He's winning no matter what, because that piston evaluation as a franchise is just gonna keep going up and up and up, especially if they have success. So it's not a 
it's not a crazy amount of money. It's it's pennies. It's pennies on the dollar, man. Yeah. For for him, it definitely is. But I, I do believe that it shows what his superpower is as an owner as he's continuing to kind of play his role better as an owner. Be the cherry on top. You can be the sweetener. There are things that don't hit the cap sheet like a coach. So you should be the individual who can go in there. <laughs> you should be the individual who can go in there and make a difference, man. And that's what he's done. T-shirt time. But look. And, and he did this. And this is in Tom Gores' track record. He did this with Stan Van Gundy. When Gundy, the Warriors were coming after him, he said, hey, well, you can be the GM. That kind of yep. swayed him over to coming to Detroit. Now, it's not the same hire for everyone yeah. freaking out. Got hoodwinged by Dwayne Casey. Yeah, at least. Uh, uh, but we understand when Tom wants somebody, he'll go get him. So that's what I can appreciate about Tom is he wants to win bad. And I yeah, think at least we're not the New York Knicks, right? Well, no, at least not. And, and yeah, people fair. said people don't want to come to Detroit, right? That's what I was told. I, I, I guess there really is a price tag. And if Tom is the owner to, to kind of break that bank, similar to – you know, Illich and Dombrowski with those old Tigers, if there are ways to say, you know what, I'm going to go in here and throw this around, cool. Because there's one thing that I do think, and I'm not speaking from any type of, like, knowledge, but just what it feels like and what it looks like. When Tom Gores comes to Detroit, I believe that the Pistons, for him, were his – this is his cherry on top. This is his palace. I think this is his – I'm coming to a city where I'm trying to be respected and loved. When we looked at Illich at the end of his career, we started to realize that this was about more than money for him. This was about – the city it was about the people it was about the camaraderie it was about the sports it was about the champion it was about being seen as something he wanted to be seen even as friends with his players man so it's like when i when i see it like that yeah you want the value up because that's a feather in the cap of a venture capitalist but i feel like he really wants to be the legend of t-shirt tom and know he's the one that well, brought i think there's limitations to, to it as well because with the new cba rolling in teams are not going to be able to have three superstars hell even four all-star caliber players that's that's gonna go away right the the luxury tax isn't what it in the future will not be what it used to be yeah so that's gonna different. change a lot of things a lot of small market teams that you would call them are gonna have a fair chance now but kool-aid appreciate you as always well done hey, thank I you so much you uh maybe hop on Definitely. let's let's bring you back tomorrow run it back tomorrow i think let's we still rock. got a lot and, of and, stuff to and, go over so and before yeah. you go where can people find you and shout out Woolworth Pistons because hey, you and Rod yeah. have been killing it. Definitely, as always, WoolworthSports.com, man. Hey, we got up a couple articles on the Monty Williams stuff. Uh, articles will always be there. Uh, the podcast, Woolworth Pistons, hosted with Jeff, hosted with uh, Rod Beard, and Terry Foster is going to be doing a lot of contributions. Uh, definitely at Detroit Kool Aid. I bet as Terry always. is hard as a rock right now. As all, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Oh, yeah. he did, he, I don't want to think about that, but I he do. thought that this okay. was all the smoke all screen right. when the news first came out. So I know he's ecstatic right now. I love it. Appreciate it, Kool-Aid. When Appreciate we get back, you. we'll get to mailbag. Shout out to everybody who stayed the entire show. We appreciate it as always. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends over at Cintron. Let me tell you about them. Cintron is the official energy drink of the Detroit Red Wings. And right now they have an exclusive offer for Woodward Sports fans for their limited edition Red Wings six-pack. Only $15 plus free shipping. Head to drinkcintron.com slash Woodward for more information. Big Boy Strawberry Fest has officially arrived, and we're here to show you the very best flavors of the season. Satisfy your sweet tooth with our deep fried vanilla Oreos, strawberry hot fudge cake, and a slice of our classic strawberry pie. But that's not all. Cool off on a refreshing summer splash salad, or savor the flavors of our chicken Caesar wrap and strawberry bacon chicken wrap. And for breakfast lovers, don't miss out on our strawberry hot cakes or our mouthwatering red velvet waffle. Strawberry Fest is something for everyone. Celebrate the sweet season with us at Big Boy. It's a great day to get some Centron in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Centron, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Centron World, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's. And if you wanna know how, go to at CentronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Ah, great taste, guaranteed.
clothes. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. I'm excited to be a dad. You should Had be. some kid walk in. Can't wait. Should be. By the time my kid's 11 years old, he'll either be uh, working in the cocaine fields in South America or... Why, why, did, why does, why we, why, why does he have to go there? I have big dreams and hopes for my kid. What's wrong with that? Let me dream. You, you Let watch me Scarface dream. too much. You're I, gonna be like, your son's going to be Tony Montana. That's what it sounds like. I, then I raised a hell of a kid. <laughs> If you ask me. <laughs> you raised the boss. That's what you raised. All right. Mailbag. Let's get to mailbag. Uh, you guys know what's funny, Adam. We have Monty Williams as our new Pistons coach, and Pistons fans are still bitching. About they the never case. stop, You know Steve-o. what? It's because never it's stop. been that bad, and they have every right to bitch. I don't want to hear anybody giving anybody shit about complaining about the last four years yeah, it's and just what the hell we've had to watch. All right. I watched Corey Joseph jack up 23 well, that, shots that in a game. That you can complain about. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Fuck off. I have every... I, this is America. I can complain. <laughs> wow, yeah, you're not wrong. It is America. The fucking transgenders can complain about everything and kill people and cancel them. I can fucking complain about Corey Joseph and the wing case. All right? Um, <laughs> okay, we'll just move on. Uh, Lions, <laughs> Lions Troll says, Mailbag, will Lions sign, uh, pick up any more fr- uh, big free agents? They have money. Doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Just because they have money to spend doesn't mean they'll spend it, but we'll see. Doubt Maybe it. Maybe we're wrong. Adam, where does Justin Trudeau rank in your list of dictators, man? He's trending upwards. He's maybe not top well, 10. Why did you? He's trending up. Who, who was that? Henderson, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Oh, God. Don't get him More started. More receiving yards this, year's, uh, this season, Laporta or Gibbs? Damn it. More that's a tough one. More receiving yards. That's a tough one. I, w- I want to say Laporta. Really? I, I don't know, man. I don't know, Mont. But it'll be close. Montgomery's going to get a lot of carries. I think they're going to use Gibbs more in the passing game. That's God a tough one. It. But then it, Gibbs is hes a home run hitter. So you got that too. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'll say Laporta. <sighs> but that's a tough I'm one. I'm not going to answer. I think it's going to be relatively the same. Yeah. The yards have to catch close. definitely Gibbs. I live in Ottawa. It sucks, says Henderson. Oh, I know. I know. Okay, what? Freedom. This is what it looks like. Yeah, I guess so. Um, this is what freedom looks like. Best country in the world. Uh, bring in funny. Adam, what? Oh, oh no. Answer, ask the question, Jeff. You're doing great. Adam, which dictator is the GOAT? Khan or Stalin? Yeah, I agree. It's Genghis Khan. I got I mean, to give the slight nod to Genghis. The guy killed 50 to 60 million people during his reign and impregnated half the world. I, that counts for something. How he even had enough nuts to do all of it is beyond me. I get laid four times, five times a week, and I'm fucking tired. This guy was doing it four or five times a day for a living. And killing people and fighting. Um, um, And ruling the world. Unbelievable. Genghis Khan is the GOAT. Call him whatever you want to call him. Overrated dictator? I think Fidel Castro. Overrated? Overrated. How do you quantify that? They just, you know, just overrated. Oh, here we go. Jake, my guy, he says, uh, Jake w- uh, Wigner says, uh, Milsack, why are Juicy's striped shirts a full topic, but Adam doesn't get a mention when he wears stripes? Because, um... See, are we going to criticize him you know, for the stripes? Or what's going on? Here? Uh, because people criticize me every day, you know? So it's it's different with you, you know? When, so the stripes you get When you pass. wear a striped shirt, it's offensive. When I do, it represents America, all right? Oh, okay. It's two different things. Okay, that's fair. When I wake up in the morning and I wear a striped shirt, I'm thinking of my country. You're thinking about what you're going to look like on camera, you selfish bitch. All right? That's the difference. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mike says, Jeff, your shirt was different. It made you look 12. Okay, that's fair. Uh, fair enough. Joel says, who is the underrated dictator that we should be talking about, Adam? Oh, man. Underrated dictator? Joel, what do what you got? Underrated dictator. Let me think. Bringing funny. Jeff, you just don't have that kind of stripe game. I guess not. <laughs> I guess hey, I'm lacking God. in that area. I guess so. Let me think. Underrated dictators that Man. we don't talk about enough. I mean, we can start with the Clintons. We don't talk about dictators that just fucking kill people. Nobody talks about it. Underrated, definitely the Clintons. Jesus. Fucking 
Banging kids on an island? All right, moving on. Oh, wow. <laughs> my God. Oh, I'm either going to get killed or canceled, and honestly, I don't give a shit. Might be both. I don't care for the internet. I don't care for this world. I'll go live in a cabin and live my best life. I don't give a fuck. There's nothing you guys can do to me. Moving on. Adam, where's the Kim family on your list? Honestly, I have no idea. No idea where to put the Kims. No guys, idea. No idea. Okay. Please. <laughs> The more you feed this man... It's not feeding me. No, They're legitimate questions, no, you're, you're, and I'm legitimately answering I swear, them. one of these me. days, we're going to have a segment, Top 10 Dictators. Oh, 100% and we're no, doing it. No. When Gabby gets back, so though, because I want to piss her off. Because I know she doesn't like it. So we're doing Top 10 Dictators tomorrow when Gabby gets in. Help. Oh 100%. Gosh, please help me. Oh, my God. Jesus. All right. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Did you guys... Nope, not doing that one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that one you're gonna I mean, take. you know, so that one you're not gonna read. You know, there's just okay. All right, all right fine. I'll fucking read it. Okay. No, well, I'll fucking I'll read, read it. Oh, I was kidding. No, 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 no. no. Read it. no. You, you want to fuck with me? No, Let's no, do I don't want to mess. It. Don't do it. Dante says, "Did you guys see that Alabama governor put in a ban on transgender sports or transgender women from competing in women's sports?" Yeah, good, good for them. Look, I think in some world you have to figure out how to make this all work. All right. But stop cheating all the women, the real women, that are fucking giving their lives to these sports. And then they have to go up against dudes that are now women. That's so unfair. It's so unfair. It just is. I know it's hard to accept because we like to be, f you know, everybody's the same person, man. You know, we're all fucking equal. We're not. We're fucking different. Me and Jeff are different. We're dudes, but we're fucking different. That's what makes this world so nice, is we're all fucking different. Anyways, I have no idea what I'm you're doing pre anymore. You're preaching. You're preaching. I have no idea. Who's more of a Michigan man, Flannel Sam or Broder? Flannel Sam because he <laughs> cries when Michigan loses. So I, I, I think Flannel gets the nod there. Oh, God. I thought we need to treat women the same as every... No, it's not. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Just like the fucking pay gap. You know, they tell you it's because you're a woman. It's not. It's not. It's because, yeah, I don't want to get into this no, again. No, okay, let's, I, let's just save just this. It's just fucking not. Let's save this topic it's for another. It's just fucking not. Uh, I've worked in tech all my life. All my life. There's a reason for it. And it's not the reason you think. And it's not because they're not qualified. It's just there aren't as many as there are men. That's the fucking reason. And nobody wants to talk about it. But it's okay. And they, It's probably my last show. I'm going down. <laughs> I'm fucking going down hard. I've attacked about everybody this morning. Anybody I missed since we're, I, I went after the Clintons, we went after, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's probably my last show. No. Lucas, you, you want to no, take my you, spot? No, you're not, you're not going nowhere. You stay. I mean, it's not going to be my choice. Oh, God. Wow, that was a lot. I'll miss you guys, too. I'm that that was a too. lot. I don't even. I don't even know where to go from here. We're two minutes over. I guess we'll just go out there. Uh, end it on that note. Oh, it's 10:02. Yeah. The Clintons killed Kobe. I believe it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you keep convincing me of that one. Oh, oh God, geez. Adam, you like black people? Of course I do. I love them. I love everybody. I love everybody. Yeah. You know, the only people I have issues with are people that try to tell me what the fuck I have to say. Yeah. You know? That's it. Most people can suck my dick. White, Bring black. Money says you fired Jeff and resigned on one show. <laughs> I what mean, a show. Yeah, yeah, but that was Jeff's decision. You know, he's pulling a Shannon no. Sharp. He thinks he's uh, too good for us. No. <laughs> I do not. Jeff is getting paid $50 million a year here. He's going to take a $55 million salary somewhere else. So a $5 million raise is good enough to leave what we have together. It's so unfortunate. <laughs> no. $5 million. The guy already makes $50 million a year. No, what are you going to do? No, not. What are you going to do? No, I, I can confirm that is not the case. Uh, but we got to go. We're right. gonna get out of here. Eh, we're out of here. I'm enjoying this mailbag segment, but whatever. And by the way, happy birthday, Brandon. Uh, it's 20, his 21st birthday. Brandon, hey, thank you. Happy birthday, happy buddy. Birthday, man. Happy birthday. Try to avoid a Clinton at all costs. All right, we're we're out of here till tomorrow. Gabby's gonna be so mad at me, but oh well. We talked about hockey today. Without her, tomorrow we'll do top ten dictators. See you guys tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs>